Hi, everybody in Facebook land and YouTube land who are watching this video. <laughs> this is Abhijit Chandra. Chandra? I get it? Chanda. Chanda. I got to just yeah. cut it to the taste. Abhijit Chanda. <laughs> Perfect. I did it. So, okay, I can do it. Yeah, you did it. Um, and we are live, Facebook Live at the moment, but we are also going to be uh, broadcasting this on YouTube. This is part of the series About Time Presents, which is our nonprofit. If you would be so kind to share our video around and our conversation, as well as like us on Facebook, our About Time Project, as well as YouTube, uh, please give us a big old fat subscribe. We're almost up to 100 subscribers. <laughs> Once we hit 100, then then you get extra points, I guess. You can do more things with your um, uh, your YouTube channel. I'm thrilled to be able to hit hit uh, 100, 100 subscribers. Um, we're also a nonprofit, just saying. If you want to donate, that would be great. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of these talks over time. But this time, today, I've got my first interview in India. What time is it? Yay! There? It is ex it's 11.34. PM. PM. It's, it's nighttime. It's going to be midnight there. <laughs> and when I asked him if it was our, you know, I said, pick a time, you know, what's good for you? And he's like, well, it'll be midnight about that time. And I'm like, well, we don't want to do midnight. But, you know, the night is young. <laughs> we can <laughs> so do whatever. Common in, in <laughs> India, I guess, for people to know. Yeah. Stay up it's late. a Wednesday night. There's a lockdown. Nobody's got, well, there are people who have to go to work tomorrow, but nobody cares because everybody stays up late. At least I do. And that's just the way, that's what I like to think. I like to think people stay up late in this country. Inter introduce <laughs> yourself to everybody. Tell, tell people who you are who don't know you yet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thanks so much, Susan, for having me on. We actually met in CSI Con in 2018. That was my first big skeptic conference, and it kind of gave me the courage to really jump in and get into the whole skeptic movement, at least in India, for what it's worth. And uh, so I started a website called berationable.com. I've got the Rationable podcast where I read a lot of stuff. So if you've, if, um, so they're usually short form things, but now short form like deep dives into different topics like homeopathy and detoxing and vaccines and stuff like that and the anti vax movement. Um, and uh, Brian Dunning from skeptoid.com was a big influence when I was kind of learning about the movement. So, I like to have like short, like 15, 20 minute episodes to kind of do a deep dive. And then I have just started a new format where I do much longer form interviews with interesting people and scientists. So uh, we've done a couple of those. We did a Facebook Live as well. And uh, things seem to be going quite nicely, actually. So if you haven't heard of Rationable, just go to the website that, you know, drop in, send an email, listen to some podcast we just started a youtube channel so i know how it feels to get a few subscribers good on you for getting to 100 i'm not there yet. i'm not quite there yet i think i'm at 88 uh, or something ridiculous like i've that. got a long way to go but we just started out so it'll be great if somebody right. dropped in there and threw us yeah you guys go there. go like his youtube channel we just kind of started out too because we were we were we had a susan gerbic channel we had a monterey county skeptics channel we had a uh, GSOW channel. And I said, you know what, we're going to blend those all into one channel and just deal with one, you know, I don't know. I didn't know this would be a thing. I had no idea I'd be doing stuff like this years later. If I had, if I had maybe a psychic vision that told me, Susan, 15 years, no, not 15, 10 years later, you're still going to be doing this Wikipedia project and you're going to be branched out and you're going to have a nonprofit. I would have been like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. No, no oh, well, we mere mortals have to just stumble <laughs> along and find our way, right? <laughs> and do the best we can. We don't have anybody to ask. So, you know, I don't want to put any pressure on you or anything. And I, is that you're going to kind of have to tell us a lot. You know, India is this massive country. Massive. Yeah. But you're kind of going to represent it a little bit today. <laughs> yeah, I no can't problem. I think of That's... anybody better. You're... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're, yeah, I know. I'd, I'd love to. I'd I jump into it. Like oh, uh, there's so much to know. Okay, so you come over to Psycon in Las mm -hmm. Vegas, and sadly, we're not having Psycon anymore. But I did get an email today that that uh, I heard that they're going to start the uh, 
PsychOn lectures start this Yeah, Thursday. I heard about that. Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, well, you're... Oh, tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow is Thursday. <laughs> I'm so, hoping it's next Thursday. I mean, this Thursday and not next Thursday. Thursday. I, I, it is this Thursday. And they're going to do every two weeks, but they skipped them. Skipped a, a, they got the next three planned, but there is skipping. I don't know why. I don't know if they're going to go back and fill it in. It's like two weeks, two weeks, four weeks. So I don't know if they're going to some. No, that, that experience was mind-blowing and why, i met another why, why was it mind-blowing i mean you there's conferences closer to you what brought you to vegas from india where, well, because where in india are you first by the way i mean kind of i'm in new place. delhi new delhi okay just new a delhi. little place like new delhi yeah which is right in the north it's the capital yeah just you know i don't know 20 million people that's oh, you know, too much oh, <laughs> <all right. laughs> Scary. So, so what brought you just, okay, were you coming over to Vegas for some other reason or America for some other reason? You just thought, oh, I'll time it so it hits this conference? Well, I, uh, it was, it was a very last minute thing. So I was, I was seriously <laughs> considering like, what do I do with Rational? Because I found that the kind of the central purpose of my existence has become to help other people think more critically. Because and kind of be a, a beginner's guide, you know? Because mm -hmm. when I was kind of getting into it, a lot of the stuff is very, uh, I mean, it, of course, it, none of it insults your intelligence, but a lot of it was a little bit more advanced than I was, and I had to really do a lot of catching up, and because I started being a skeptic at the age of 30. 30? Yikes. Wow. Um, so, uh, so yeah, but so I was thinking of kind of, how do I make this more? I mean, what do I do? How do I write more? What do I write about? How do I get into this seriously? How do I get a following? And my wife's like, you know, aren't there any conferences around? And I'm like, I looked through all of India and I couldn't find any, well, any conferences uh, that I could find. And then she was like, well, look abroad, see if you can find something. So then I was like, oh, wait, there's SciCon, there's Nexus, there's QED in the UK, the, the Australian, you know, the Skepticon and stuff like that, which I, you know, I had been hearing about in all these podcasts. And I was like, well... Can I get into one of those? So I uh, I did a little digging and I got into that. And Cara Santa Maria, she's got uh, she had a Psycom camp happening in LA. Oh, so that's right. okay. I said, you know what, two birds, one flight. So uh, <laughs> I just uh, I managed to get into Psycon. I met so many wonderful people, including you and including Dr. Shantanu Abhyankar, who is also a uh, very prominent skeptic activist in India. And he's also a part of a skeptic uh, organization and they do have meetings, but they, hadn't, they haven't had one in a bit. Um, so I met him there. So we are in, constantly in touch. I've done a couple of interviews with him. And now I'm going to be a Nexus this weekend because it's online. And Isn't I don't have exciting? to yeah. spend too much money on the flights. But <laughs> you know, being in that environment is just is just fantastic. Like I just nerd out all day long with anyone I meet. And it's just, I mean, I've never had that experience before in my life. I have friends who are, you know, who have who think like this, but to be among 600, over 600 people, it was just mind blowing. And people I admired, and I mean, I met Richard Dawkins and Bill Nye and uh, Stephen Fry and Brian Dunning and you and, you know, Yvette Ross and uh -huh. so many others. Like, it just, it blew my mind. And uh, some of people I didn't know then and I know now, like Mick West. And I'm like, why? Like, and Tim Caulfield. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, uh, oh, he's amazing too. Yeah, Mick West. Yeah, so I was. Uh -huh. So I was. I was. Now I'm like, why hadn't I heard of these guys before? <laughs> like, what? So, uh, so yeah, it's just it's been a life changing experience. And we're learning it's, about you too, which is exciting too, because it's not just about you meeting all these people. We get to meet you. It's really right. interesting, you know, know, to be able to. No, I mean everybody's just a regular person. Yeah. Or, you know, and and we're all trying to do the to best we can. And Leonard Trammell, and for everybody who's, who's watching this for the first time, I have a big computer uh, screen on my right. I guess it'd be my right yeah. side. Oh, yeah, Leonard but, is amazing. I met him at Psycon too. It yeah, was, he just it said, really nice he chat. said you were a delight that weekend. And you said, I was, um, I met you at, um, I did a workshop. I 
think I did it with Mark Edward on cold reading or psychic activism, yeah. or activism or something. And you were like in the front row, just like, I'm ready to learn. <laughs> it was so yeah. true. And you met somebody from my GSW project. I think you were sitting next to him. And I can't quite. Yeah, Adrian. Adrian, yeah, Adrian Hill. She's yeah. not here right now. I don't really still see her. She was. She's an. She was absolutely wonderful. That was my first session. Yeah, and there she is. She's here. She says yes. That's welcome. correct. And that was my first hey. time meeting her too. She is just. Yeah. A, she's just awesome. And I talk to her all the time over Messenger. Don't you love the internet? I mean, my absolutely. Goodness. There must be a God <laughs> and, who created that for us. And you know, I <laughs> the amazing thing was that whole session with Mark Edwards. You know, the astrology one. And I was sitting there with Paul Offit, and I had never heard of Paul Offit before. And now, of course, it's I'm kicking myself in the head. I'm reading. I'm listening to his audio book, Bad Advice. I just finished it. Actually, you just finished reading it. And and Adrian yeah. just told me the same thing yesterday. She was, I just finished reading the book. Thanks for recommending it. It's good, isn't it? It's fantastic. And he he uh, helped out a little bit when I was writing my one of my first pieces on vaccines. And I mean, he is such a like a force of nature and so down to earth. And like I didn't like in, initially when we had that whole session, I didn't really remember him until I saw him sitting signing books. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I need to find out more about this guy. So <laughs> I, I promptly bought the book. The I yeah. promptly bought the book and it's autographed. Yay! Woo! <laughs> you know, people <laughs> people out there who are like, oh, I should go to a conference someday. Look, he came all the way from freaking New Delhi. You can come from, no excuses. from like a three-hour flight. Just do it. Well, okay, not right now. Don't do it right now. Don't go anywhere right now. Just stay <laughs> at your little house. Don't do any stay right there. But um, <laughs> don't bring your germs around. But <laughs> but my point is, is that, you know, you can watch these lectures online. You can you can do these things, but it's not the same. It's, it's not, there's so much totally. more conference. It's not like an academic conference where you go, you sit down, you listen to the lecture and you go off with your little family group, wherever to, to dinner or something. No, you stay with people. You're there the whole time. You meet, you turn around and you're like, oh, I'm sitting next to Richard Dawkins or I'm like sitting next to Brian Denny, <laughs> you know, or Mick West. Exactly. Or you're at lunch or dinner and you're sitting around a table and there, there's Bill Nye sitting there with you. And you don't know. And, and, and like you said, getting your book signed. I love signed books. I buy books just so <laughs> I can get them signed. I haven't read them. I feel really bad. I have three or four all off of books that I've read. One. I've got a ton of those books sitting here still, which are just waiting to be read and I haven't, but I'm got, I've, I thought, you know, while I'm driving, let me just, you know, get the audiobook versions. So um, right now I'm, I'm listening to escaping the rabbit hole by Mick West. So it's really good. It's, well, I read the, I read the first draft or the first, not first draft, but like close to first draft when I'm not close to close to the final product. I, I, I got okay. it close to the final <laughs> product and, and, um, and I just, uh, I had, so I don't know what the final, final product was. I haven't read it. I've got it. I've got it signed, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, I think it's close. Yeah. But yeah, that's a really good <laughs> but that's book fantastic. too. It talks a lot about how to talk to people and how to, how to, um, you know, get people who have fallen into this rabbit hole, mainly conspiracy theory and how to help them get out kind of he's there's a lot of wisdom and you know yeah. in this community and I find that I quote these people quite often and you know and I you know I this is something I mean especially McWest Stone is something that I appreciate and uh it's something that I came across independently in a way like it's something that I it's the kind of tone that I want to give the rationable website and podcast and everything because I believe that that respectful questioning discourse is something that is is the most effective to kind of get people to get into a conversation it didn't get people into a you know on the defensive and I first encountered that when I uh, when I when I read the eating atheists have you heard about that one the witch atheist the the manual for creating atheists oh uh Bogosian yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I haven't read it, so. but I, I know exactly what you're talking about. 
No, it's fantastic. And there's this uh, guy called Anthony Mag- Magna Mosco who goes around the streets and having like these Socratic He's in Texas. epistemology conversations. And I'm not, I'm not very heavily into uh, the religious aspect of skepticism because it's something that has fortunately never not been too, you know, significant in my life per se. But it is, and on top of that, I'm, I've been brought up in a very liberal household where I've been, you know, I've been given the liberty to believe whatever I want to believe. And, but I wanted to apply the same concept to skeptic conversations about maybe alternative medicine or, you know, health and nutrition and diets and things like that, which is my primary, you know, that's my primary focus of interest. You know, that's my, that what I mostly write about. And I've, and especially in this group, so I have this group called the Rational Conversations Group, which everybody's welcome to drop in. So Leonard's there too, and he has been policing a lot of the stuff that's been going on, which is greatly appreciated because I usually don't have the uh, uh, the guts to kind of, I mean, because I do want to start conversations, but sometimes conversations not worth are not worth starting. And Leonard does a lot of fact checking and he puts me straight a lot of the time. And I really, really appreciate that. So I've been trying to have that kind of conversation with a lot of people who bring in things like, you know, oil pulling and, you know, other concepts that a lot of people still believe in. And I don't mind having those kinds of posts in my group as long as there's a respectful conversation around it. Like people need to talk about it. You can't just say, oh, you know, we can't just shun things. And because I do want to make that skepticism, that critical thinking kind of universal and something that other people do want to get involved in. I think that is the most important thing. And I think, and when I'm reading, now that I'm reading McQuest's book, it's, or listening to the audio book, it, it resonates with me a lot. And I think, and having conversations with conspiracy theorists is something that I've also had struggled with in the past because I'm like, how can you think that? (laughs) <laughs> but at the same time, it's, <laughs> but at the same time, you have to, I mean, a lot of these people are very intelligent and they have put a lot of thought into what they believe. So the best way to kind of tackle that is to have a respectful conversation and right. question where they're coming from and what they believe. And do they believe in this too? And do you believe in that too? And, you know, kind of like throw it around and make them feel comfortable and open up. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lovely way to do things. Uh, then, of course, there's a very, there's a very aggressive um, conversations as well, which are going on out there, which I think is also a, is an important part of the movement where you need to be outspoken, you need to be firebrand to get some messages across. And I think it's our, and they all combine into one big chorus. So you all have a, different types of conversations with different people who, you know, accept different things. Right. It's been exciting to see uh, your evolution of, you know, somebody like, oh, well, you know, I'd like to see what I can do here. And, oh, now I have a podcast. Now I have, you know, uh, a conversation group on Facebook and, you know, it's just on and on and, and meeting other people. The internet, thank you, Al Gore, as uh, Leonard was reminding me, <laughs> that, um, you know, the internet has provided us this chance to be able to have a voice and have a chance to, mm. um, you know, to meet people. And, distance and location isn't really a problem anymore time zone is just trying to figure out the darn stupid time zone yeah. <laughs> well, Richard up, Saunders yeah. and I were Jeez. online the other day just like just totally blowing it not knowing how to figure out <laughs> and we know how to do it but it's just I don't know I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's the lockdown I'm gonna blame that even though I've always had problems with yeah it. I'm not a blame man. everything on the lockdown yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. I'll say I, I blamed pregnancy for a very long time. I think my kids were teenagers, and I was still saying that it was it was their fault for me not having <laughs> the cognitive uh, abilities to be able to to remember things. It, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way it is. Absolutely. Yeah. And okay. So let's talk about. There's lots to talk about. So let's see. Mm. There, I <laughs> I don't usually watch a lot of Netflix. <laughs> ah, I just happened to just click on a, a, a video on Netflix and said, I'll give it like 10 minutes. And I got sucked into it <laughs> as you did. 
as you did too. Yeah, last night. It's called Indian Mary. Uh, it's an Indian arranged marriage show, and it follows a matchmaker. Yeah. And it's on Netflix. Yeah. It's like the first thing you see when you go to Netflix, at least on my channel. And it follows all these people who have really compelling, wonderful stories and the culture of, well, as I say, there's lots of cultures in, in India and uh, people who are Indian in America. Somebody's in New yeah. Jersey, somebody's in Houston, uh, they're different places and they all want to get married or their families want them to get married. They're like, you need to get married three months you better be <laughs> married in three months. you need to find her or him and we're gonna have the wedding and i want a baby on this it's like wow the way the parents yeah. are controlling these people's lives and some of the people are genuinely really really wanting to get married and, and it's a compelling story but okay besides that it's the i wanted to talk to you about the uh pseudoscience involved mm -hmm. because the matchmaker is really insistent that everything has to match with uh astrology and yeah. that was she says at one point she says people in india it is very important that that they match the um the astrology she says people in the west not so much and i thought well that's interesting so what do you think yeah. what's what is was that you saw about five episodes. Do you feel that, that was kind of a typical, or was that some fringe, you know, this idea of arranged marriages? Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Like, uh, honestly, uh, we had it for, you know, before our wedding. Um, so my, uh, my wife's dad, my father-in-law, did want to get our horoscopes matched before we got into anything because... A lot of stuff kind of depends on that. And that is the case with, as far as I know, a majority of uh, marriages and weddings that happen in this country. So the whole horoscope thing, and a lot of people consider it to be science. It's, uh, it's very different from just being an Aries or, you know, like a Taurian or something of that sort. There's, I mean, we don't go up to, you know, we don't go up to someone and say, will you marry me? By the way, what's your sign? <laughs> 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 it's uh but in that's india that is in America, essentially the... except we don't we've skipped the do, will you marry me it's just what's your sign, <laughs> hey, what's, your sign? what's your sign what you drinking <laughs> okay that was 1970s all right <laughs> i'm dating myself. no that is that and that is the uh, essentially that is still continuing and is very very prevalent across the country almost every really? wedding has to have that as a an affirmation that this couple can be together and it's it's they have there are apps there are websites where you can put in your name your date of birth your time of birth your place of birth like it's all kind of triangulated with all these different aspects to see which planet and which stars were in the sky at the time and from that there are a, a multitude of convoluted prospects that come out of it and from that, they will determine when you will get married, whether the person who you are supposed to get married to will be good for you, uh, whether you're, you'll have a divorce within a few years, what really? kind of kids you'll have. So very much like this, this lady in the show, she goes up to him and says like, oh, you know, they'll have twins. And he does the face reading bit, right? That Which was is, interesting face reading know. too, I thought. It's just looking at people's pictures on the phone and making up stuff. Well, whenever you like, whenever you go to one of these guys, the pundits, so to speak, they will, I mean, they can do all sorts of things. They'll do palm readings. They'll do your horoscope readings. They, they have a variety of different tools in their toolkits to do this sort of stuff. And it is very important. And there's one very interesting thing, which I learned, I don't know, a couple of decades back when a friend of mine was, well, a decade and a half, let's say. I don't want to date myself too much. But uh, she was planning to get married. And it turns out that through a certain type of horoscope, a person can be something called a manglik. A manglik? Manglik. It's like a lick a mango. Manglik. Um, 
<laughs> and this, I, I'm not sure of all the details of what in what entails being a Manglik, but apparently if a Manglik marries a non-Manglik, one of them is going to die pretty soon. Yeah, so that is serious business. Like you don't oh, mess with that. so you definitely, well, that would mean that you really have to follow this astrology. Yeah. Because if and you don't, you might end up killing yourself or the other person by defying the stars. Yeah, exactly. So the uh, customary thing is, and I've heard different versions of this, you either marry a black bitch, like a dog, uh, or you marry a banana tree. And I'm not sure of the exact process that follows that, but then after a certain amount of time of being married to this and you passing off your bag manglik karma to this other thing, then you can get married to this person once the badge gurus worn off. You know, or the marriage doesn't happen at all and you are banned from marrying that person unless you're both manglik or you're both non manglik. Only then are things going to be smooth sailing for you. Of course, it depends on a million other factors, but <laughs> that is essentially the first. Can, can you <laughs> that's the that first word? criteria. Can look it up later. How do you spell it? Man. I would M A N G L I C K. I'm guessing, or an L I K M M A N G L I K. L I K. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I want to look that up. I've never heard that phrase before. So that that's that's definitely new. The, uh, the, um, I guess they also not only pick the right partner for you, but they pick the right day of your wedding. You know, we need to have the wedding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Day. And they pick the wedding day before they pick the, the person you're going to marry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, if you pick the person you marry, then they put that together and they come up with a wedding date. And the crazy thing is that wedding date is usually an auspicious date which is kind of across the board so you have several of these auspicious dates through the year so especially in delhi and i'm sure in a lot of other places across india especially heavily populated places there are days when we have 30000 weddings happening simultaneously in this city 30000 and this happens every year, several times a year. And since all the wedding hubs, and there's an, I mean, this is a massive business. So what they said in the show as well, that, you know, getting married and the whole marriage industry, the wedding industry, the wedding organizers, the matchmakers, the planners, the caterers, the, the venues, these are massive industries and they exist on primarily, their income comes primarily from these weddings. And there are, Lots of places, of places across India and in different hubs, even around Delhi, where you have venues solely created to host weddings. So you have these places and there are several of them nearby. So first of all, it's nice to take a kind of, if you want to do a recce and kind of wander around and check out all the different venues and see what they have to offer. But the problem is that when you have 30,000 weddings happening and all these venues are packed on a single night, the traffic is crazy. So it's, I mean, like, those are kind of those nights, like I am not traveling far. You're going to stay home or go to a wedding. And if you want to go to a wedding, go a couple of hours early because otherwise you're screwed. So, so when you say there's certain days, would, like in America, we might say uh, Valentine's Day. That's like mm -hmm. the day of lovers. So lots of people will get married on Valentine's Day for romantic reasons or so that they can remember their wedding. <laughs> <laughs> what, day is what is my anniversary? One... Oh, Valentine's Day. And so they know that they always have to give flowers or gifts to their spouse on Valentine's Day, as well as their, you know, kind of one one day kind of thing. Let's not pick some random thing out there. But is that when you say there are dates that are kind of picked that everybody wants, is it kind of like a Valentine's Day? Or is it some, you know, some kind of holiday or some kind of no, no, not really. It's just it can uh, it can it can be pretty much any given day. It could be it could be in the middle of the week. So why don't know. why are there so many on that day? Is it some? I mean, Those there's about the thirty thousand astrology. astrologers that are all picking. 
are you saying that the astrologers all use the same system and that if you go to one astrologer and one across town, you're going to get the same kind of information? Because I have you go, a feeling you go they around, use the same app. They, hmm? they use the same I app. have a feeling they all <laughs> use the same app. Now, that would make sense I have a feeling. why they're all picking that same day for a perfect day for marriage, because then that would that would make sense because i'm thinking if you go to different astrologers all over you would get different times and different days wouldn't this be good for marriage when you think about it because if you think to yourself we've gone through our we're a good match astrology wise and Mm -hmm. we got married at the perfect time when we were told to get married and we're going to have you know maybe a little bit of disagreement here and there but we're going to mostly uh, have a good successful marriage with children and stuff would that allow the couple to kind of uh be, if they both believed in this obviously just kind of mm-hmm. get through their life like a placebo marriage maybe maybe it very possibly could be of course there could be you know like i mean i, I think after a point that kind of wears off and you're like you know if this is a horrible <laughs> marriage it's a horrible marriage like i don't care what the astrologer said in the beginning this is not working so i'm sure that happens too um, but yeah, I, at least in the beginning on the whole, I guess it does give a lot of people hope that, yeah, we're doing the right thing. We're going the, we're going down the right path. Maybe this is the guy I'm meant to be with as far as the stars are aligned, literally. And, uh, from, from my limited knowledge of Indian astrology, there is a, there is a system that people have to learn which is what the, the softwares, uh, the software, the apps, the websites, they all have to use those same systems and rules and um, guidelines, which I have a feeling is actually probably a lot more organized than Western astrology. I can't say it's more accurate. Uh, There are a lot of people who swear by it. There are people who say that it is a science and, you know, there's no two ways about it, that this is a science and that's the way it is. In fact, in this, in this Netflix show, Indian, uh, what is it? Matchmakers, Indian matchmaking. Yeah, I think that's it. There's a gentleman. Somebody will they tell call. us in a minute what the true name of this Netflix show is that I'm. No, Indian remembering. matchmaking, and uh, they call this gentleman to meet one of the uh, one of the one of the ladies who is trying to get married, Aparna, I think, mm-hmm. and he is an aeronautics engineer by profession, really? but he does astrology on the side. And he comes with his laptop and he flips it open and he puts in her numbers and gets a readout of what's what. So I'm not saying he's just, I mean, I mean, engineers do get up to all sorts of crazy things. It's true. But, (laughs) (laughs) um, but that kind of gives it a kind of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there is a certain, I guess, being an aeronautics engineer does kind of give it a certain amount of credibility. Yeah. And there are lots of people who are scientists or engineers or some in some similar profession who do believe that this is uh, all totally legit and will, you know, live by it. So it's a very, I mean, I think Indian astrology is something that is really, would be really interesting to dig into because there's a lot, a lot going on there. And it's this, it is completely unique from other forms of astrology that exist around the world oh. for sure. And yeah. so do people all know, you know, I'm saying to myself, I could go over to an app right now and I could put all my information, but I had found a clue what my date, my, uh, what time I was born. Time? I kind of think I do, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, does everybody in India know what time they're born? I mean, is that like a thing, like knowing what day you're born? It's like, oh, and, and of course, where you're born as well as the time. Is that a common, do you know what time you were born? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, I think my parents know approximately. My mom's like, ask your dad because I was unconscious at the time. <laughs> so, well, I mean, it's so on your birth certificate. Like, mm, I think maybe around. But, you know. Nah, I mean, they just put the date in the birth certificate, I guess. I, it doesn't even have my name on it because. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. My birth certificate doesn't have my name on it because they hadn't named me by the oh. time I was born. So, uh, yeah, that was back in the day, you know, different times. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like so still, long you know. ago. The, so, <laughs> so, the, 
so it was it was a really interesting thing to hear this matchmaker talking about you know how how tied she was to it i thought you know this she says sometimes people don't believe it and you know she's kind of like well there'll be repercussions and that's they have to deal with that and i thought you know, it just it felt like what if people find somebody and it's a really good match compatibility wise, but they're they don't align. Yeah, that's that is a very serious problem. That is something that wouldn't that be awful, like a Romeo Juliet situation where they (laughs) couple really love each other. And yeah, sorry, he's he was born, you know, two days too early for you or something. Otherwise, I mean, do they do they have people that go and forge the birth certificates or something? <laughs> oh, sorry, we got that wrong. It's it's. I thought it was a two. <laughs> it's actually a five. So you're good to go. <laughs> go Oops. ahead, get married. <laughs> or you know, we we were looking at we were looking at the clock in in uh, in New Delhi, but actually, you know, the time it was different on the other area, and so if we use the time well, zone thing. Fortunately, all of India has been brought under one time zone, regardless. Damn! So. <laughs> you can't even use that. Yeah, you can't. But this is something that was that my wife and I, before we got married, we were kind of concerned about because I think somebody consulted a numerologist and it turned Ooh. out that we weren't a good match according to the numerologist. And I'm like, who the hell is a numerologist to tell us if we can or can't be together? Like, that's ridiculous. So, but fortunately, when it came to the big legit astrology thing, we managed to scrape through. Lucky so, you. All's Lucky well. you. so yeah, I do yeah. remember the numerology in this move in this show. Um, I'm trying to remember. She goes to some numerologist, and they were like, "Well, it comes out. The answer comes out to 18, and eight plus one is nine, and nine is you know." It was like wow, you're really reaching. You could stop at any number. You could you could say, and nine is divisible by three, and three is the number that we're looking for to make this work. <laughs> but if I was looking for the number nine, I could have stopped at nine. And, you know, the numerology part was really interesting. I can't remember the situation in this show. Why were they talking about numerology? I think it was like I don't the remember third, that in the show. episode. I can't yeah. remember. Well, a lot of people in India do ha- have changed their names around and they judge their oh. uh, the names of their businesses and their children and their own names and their first names and the last names based on numerology and what people say, like you have to add a Y in there or you should put a W in there or you should oh. put an extra D in there. So you can have a better like, outlook in life if you spell your name differently. You know, I've always wondered about that. You know, do you use your full name, your middle name, your, you know, at what point is the name... <laughs> uh you know correct do you use the name your if your name is thomas do you use thomas or do you use tom (laughs) i honestly i haven't figured that out but you know what having this conversation i have a feeling like i really need to dig into this now i'm like really like i'm very curious now (laughs) to figure out how it all works even more so now that this is a popular netflix documentary and these topics are coming up i think that you're doing research when you watch it's not a guilty pleasure watching this. You don't care yeah. about those people in there. You're just doing it for the research to learn about what's actually happening in marriages uh, in, in yeah. India. I like that. Absolutely. I think that's yeah. a great, that's and a great I, reason to watch it. I'm going to have to finish. <laughs> I, I want to know what happens. <laughs> I've got three episodes to go, so I'm, I'm watching that tonight. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> in fact, I had, I had uh, the Goop Lab which is on my watch list Ooh, and I, I haven't, haven't managed to get that. myself to watch it. Bob Palmer is really into it. He wrote the Wikipedia page for the Goop Lab. He's yes. really good on her case, Gwyneth Paltrow. I can't he watched it because watch. so that you don't have to. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And he wrote the Wikipedia <laughs> page. Like I read the Wikipedia page so I don't have to watch it. But boy, there's so much out there. I cannot seem to get myself. No. It's it's scary, scary, scary stuff. Yeah, so that that's been a one like I've like I'm like, should I dip into this now? And I'm like, no, it's probably gonna piss me off. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> leave it there. Did you see that most of your bit. listeners are here in America? Yeah, yeah, a, a significant portion of them for sure. We, I do have a, a fortunately a, a good, I mean a, a nice number of listeners in India as well. But I have to say the vast majority are all in the U.S. And it's it's, it's wonderful to know 
<laughs> I hope Psycon has something to do with it. I'm sure, you know, whatever it is in you guys. And uh-huh. um, I think that kind of content, though, is something that is becoming quite popular in the U.S. Um, it's something that I, because the one of the reasons why I wanted to start this off was because we don't have this kind of content in India, which is dedicated to critical thinking, dedicated yeah. to investigating the claims of uh, pseudoscience in all its glory. So my personal thing is, of course, towards the medicine and health side of things, because I've always been very interested in in biology and, you know, and the human anatomy and everything. But yeah, there is a huge scope for a variety of other things that need to be done in this country and something specifically catering to the Indian thought process and challenges in India. So now I'm aware, of course, that since I have a significant portion of of, um, my listenership in the US, I, of course, I want to make content that bridges both the sides of the conversation yeah, it's interesting to know uh, what's going have on. it relevant to india as well while also being relevant to americans right now we got a question Sorry? from janice janice boyton she says mm-hmm. the believer i don't know she says i believe the leader of rpm rapid prompting method is from india and still has ties there occasionally i've heard anecdotally that it's being promoted there but i don't have any news articles she wants to know if you've heard of facilitated communication or rapid prompting method being a, a thing there. Do you know what we're talking about with rapid prompting? Um, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did watch some of that conversation you had with that lady. Um, her her name, name is, um, what is her name? <laughs> um, I ha- will find it really quick. Uh, she is, um, she's, she's been in America for quite a while, I believe now, but she is kind of the founder of this. She has a son. And somebody's mm-hmm. probably asking right now. Um, yeah, so I have heard about this before, and I think I heard about it on the Skeptics Guide uh, quite a while back. And I, I haven't heard of incidences of it happening in India. I wouldn't be surprised if it did, because it's just something that is so you know, easy to implement. And it fools not only the parents, the child, and, well, maybe not the child, uh, or the person <laughs> yeah, they know you know, who's being facilitated, but it'll probably it probably the facilitators are probably convinced that it works too. Same in America. So, her name is Soma, and I'm going to spell her last name because there's no way I'm going to try to pronounce this. M U K H O P A D H Y A Y. Mukhopadhyay. Soma is her first name. <laughs> yes, yeah, Soma Mukhopadhyay. Yeah. Soma, I can. Uh, I, I don't want to embarrass myself further. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. I, can't it up. I, I can't. I can't. It, it's an if it's a word in English, I probably will mispronounce it. I get all like, oh, yeah. I gotta pronounce that word. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's probably a word I say all the time. But oh no, it's right there. I gotta say it. Oh stress, stress. <laughs> no, Indian names can be pretty complicated. I'll give you that. Indian names, Welsh names, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Scary. Don't don't. <laughs> you're you're giving me woo-hoo, Welsh names. That's scary, scary. Irish names too. Real Irish names. Did uh, yeah. <laughs> those are all you're hit, you're hitting all my scary stuff? Did um so you know I do want to talk to you about the organization there. Not that you're a part of it and you're representing the uh, the Rationalist Association of India, but you probably mm-hmm. have a lot more insight into it than we do. We wrote we did GSOW did write the Wikip- rewrite the Wikipedia page for the organization. I'm really glad mm-hmm. we did. We were able to take the Wikipedia page and put it into really good shape. And man, oh man, the problems we have here in America are nothing like the problems you guys are facing over there. It is this blasphemy law. I believe that's what it was. Yeah. They, they, there are people, yeah, I know there's violence in America. I got that. But if you come out as an atheist here in America, it is not like what is going on there. And and just mm. on a whole different subject, the Godmen is so frightening that, you know, these, these people who go from village to village and perform basic magic tricks, mm-hmm. saying they're getting it from God. But if you go from village to village to explain what's actually going in, then their thugs are going to come in and knock you out because you're just taking away their revenue. It's, it's, 
is it really as bad as what we see? Or is that just, again, like something that just feels like it's um, a big deal, even though it's just kind of a, you know, oh, I, I don't even know anybody who's had any harm done from that or. It's, it's very real and it's still happening and it's, it's, uh, it's quite widespread. In fact, uh, you should really, you should uh, try, I'll, I'll, I'll help you get in touch with Dr. Abhyankar, mm -hmm. who is a part of uh, a rationalist organization in Maharashtra, which is in West, Western India. And they have done a lot of work in trying to pass legislation to um, try and protect people from uh, things like black magic and you know, people who are trying to get not only black magic, but, you know, dangerous rituals that a lot of these gurus try and get people to perform in order to appease the spirits, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, suck money out of them. So they have managed to pass legislation. I don't know. Of course, implementing that is a totally different uh a totally different matter because uh, just because it's in the law books in India doesn't mean that it's going to do anything on the ground. But that's definitely a big step in the right direction of managing to at least get the judicial system and the law and order system to acknowledge that these practices can be harmful because superstition is something that is still quite rampant in India. The, the, uh, I mean, the lack of critical thinking, the indoctrination and, you know, things like that, which pass down from for generations are just there. I mean, it's just it is the same as any other religion. And the problem with Hinduism is that it is so diverse and it's so vast, like the Abrahamic religions have one book, which I mean, each. Right which is relatively easy for a person to go through in a lifetime and kind of get to know thoroughly and be able to challenge its claims. But in India, with the, especially with the Vedas, the Upanishads, the, and the, uh, the epics of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, which are all considered to be religious texts, it is a lot to get through. And if you, and of course, if you read the English translations, then anything you refute will obviously say, oh, you read the wrong, wrong, wrong translation. Um, so it's it's a it is a vast play field with a huge number of claims and doctrines that can be molded and people these gurus and the brahmins can say what they want to make it sound legitimate like the whole caste system is based on certain scriptures which have been molded to the suit the needs of the higher castes so that the lower castes are subjugated and ignored and have been considered untouchable for hundreds of thousands of years. And there's no way for them to, and there's, there's really no hope in sight for any of that to be eradicated. You could make laws about it, but the police, the judicial system, a lot of them will already be believing in the caste system. So these, so that's just an example, but these, there are, but fortunately, there are also rationalist organizations like the one Dr. Abhankar is uh, working with, which is which are working towards fighting this kind of superstition. But at the same time, they also get um, in harm's they get put in harm's way because of it. Like uh, there's this gentleman, Mr. Dabolkar, who is the one who founded this organization, the ration, one of the rationalists. I think it's the uh, the community for the eradication of superstition or that something to that right, effect. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you had, uh, you'd actually recorded all of Dr. Abhyankar's uh, white paper presentation at SciComm. So, yes, Susan, uh, and it's, you did something right. Yeah. right. Because the Sunday papers, the SciComm doesn't record. So I said, yeah, yeah, exactly. it's with my camera, like I'm recording this because that's some of the best <laughs> part of SciComm is the Sunday papers. So, and, Which is, oh, and, and thank you for that because I managed to watch <laughs> his talk and I had missed that talk because I had unfortunately, I had misjudged the time and I was actually just outside the hall talking to somebody else. Oh. And then by the time I got in, I was like, oh, damn, I missed the whole thing. I hope somebody recorded it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was a powerful, so, uh, it was a powerful like 10, 15 minute. The Sunday papers are like 10, 15 minutes long. And yeah. there's only like five of them and, and they're, um, you have to apply it. At, to, to Ray Hall, that's his name, at PsyCon, to mm -hmm. give yourself a Sunday paper. It's a big deal. 
a lot of lot of uh, scrutiny to make sure it's really tight and it's like but it was a really good talk. I've seen it a couple times now. Yeah. And he is, so, and that's, you, you're, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have nothing to complain about here in America. This is scary stuff that they're yeah. putting up with. No, so this, so the gentleman who, who, uh, who started, who founded this organization was uh, killed in um, drive-by shooting yeah. on a motorcycle. Because of his beliefs, not because of- Yeah, and his, and his activism. Yeah, it's active, not because of some just randomness. It was, and they haven't caught the people. No, they haven't. And they, I don't think there's much motivation to catch those people. So fortunately, at least for me uh, and the circles I uh, run around in, so to speak, <laughs> I don't have, uh, I, I, a lot of people have accepted me. I haven't faced any ridicule when it comes to my religious beliefs, when it comes to my skepticism. I mean, of course, a lot of people mistake my skepticism for cynicism, which I have tried to explain that it's not, but it's, yeah. uh, it, is a, it is a common misconception. It's something that you know, one has to kind of yeah. deal with. But there thing. are a lot of people out there who are on the ground and being attacked in some way, shape or form pretty frequently. Uh, there's this excellent, there's a, some snippets, which actually Richard Saunders surprisingly put me onto. Uh, not surprisingly, I'm just saying that it's surprising that I'd never seen this before, but it's a fantastic documentary uh, done by BBC in India called The Guru Busters. Now it's very hard to come by the full thing. I have written to the, uh, to the publisher and to the, to the producers, but they said, well, this is property of BBC, so we can't really, you know, re-release it without that authorization. I was like, well, maybe you should. It's, yeah. it's still relevant today. It's very important work. And so Guru Busters is a documentary on the rationalists in India in all who have gone, uh, who go f to different, uh, to these gurus who are trying to, you know, do their so-called black magic ceremonies and do miracles and stuff like that and bring people back to life from the dead and show people how that doesn't work. So they have, so there have been a lot of times when they've gone up there, they have done repeated the same trick that the guru is doing in front of all in front of this guy's audience and said, listen, we can do it too. And we can tell you it's not magic. And Oh, they get so pissed. <laughs> you're taking away it their is, money. Uh, this it's, is their their power. If you explain the trick, you're taking the power back away from them. Exactly. So, of course, they still have tons of followers. There are, you know, hour long, two hour long TV segments where you just have a guru sitting there and people coming up to him and asking questions, and he tells them to go to a certain temple and worship a certain god and put that much money in the pot, and everything is going to be fine. And it's, I mean, it's infuriating. And of course, the most recent one is, uh, is Baba Ramdev, who is a yogi. He's been going around uh, promoting yoga across the country. He's got tens of thousands or maybe millions of followers. And he started an FMCG company because why not? Let's make some money off it. And he sells like pretty much an alternative to probably every other FMCG product out there. He just started a clothing line where they are selling jeans. They haven't quite figured out the spiel for that, but they are already working on how to sell Indian made Ayurvedic jeans. You don't know what will come out of that. <laughs> but most recently, the fiasco that has gotten me most disturbed and annoyed and but also has shown me a glimmer of hope in this country is they came up with what they claimed was a COVID cure, like a hundred percent cure. And they were it was all over the press that you know that's the and the, the organization, the company is called Patanjali and Patanjali Ayurveda. And they had come up with a, a bunch of different herbs and concoctions, which are already Ayurvedic staples. And they had said, we've run a clinical trial, we've done tests, and we are going to be releasing this within a short while. You'll see this is all completely evidence-based, and we have cured 100% of the patients. And all they've ever published is the registration for the trial, and nothing else other than that. Fortunately, 
they were pulled up on it and saying, you know, if you haven't had a trial, how can you claim that this is a hundred percent COVID cure? Because you can't do that. And even our own ministry of quackery called the Ministry of Ayush, which is which is in existence to promote alternative medicine, uh-huh. even they pull them up. They say you can't make such claims. Fortunately, within a couple of weeks, they changed the claims of, oh, we never said it was a cure. It's just an immunity booster. And it's now it's out in the market. And everybody said, oh, then it's fine. You just go on and do whatever you want. We have had uh, so much nonsense. I think this pandemic yeah. has really revealed how, how the division and how scientifically illiterate people really are and the power that social media has over us. And um, I think Mark wanted to ask you something about, Mm -hmm. let me see, Mark. He's waiting for me to to, to in for for a second there so he could get in there. Hi. Hey Mark, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? (laughs) Good, good. So you know know who I am? Yeah, yeah, I met you at at PsyCon as well. I was was there at the session. Oh, okay, all right, all right. so do you are you seeing a uh, a rise in uh, I mean I was in India I didn't I didn't see that psychics were a problem um, well that depends I don't I mean I think people who believe I mean it, it, I'm sure it is at a much lower scale than it has been in the yeah, past talk, I don't have any talking, real numbers on me talking to dead people that's not a that's not a real problem there. It's not a big problem, but I'm sure there are some scammers out there and there will be a lot of takers for that sort of thing. There is, okay. I mean, there's definitely still a belief in haunted houses and, you know, people right. who are not oh, quite yeah, I, in I, the I, afterlife I experienced, yet. I experienced that, but I'm just, I was just wondering if you're seeing an increase in it because of the pandemic. It seems like when there's more death, there's more, there's more wanting to reach out and say goodbye to your loved ones or whatever. So I'm just wondering if it was a a problem. I haven't noticed anything, at least as far as the news is concerned, uh, that this is a problem at this point of time. I, if there is, Good. and if somebody listening can, you know, fill us in on those details, I'd, I'd love to. Well, know I'm, that, but... I'm, I'm glad to hear that because uh, it's probably one of <laughs> yeah. the few, few places where it isn't a problem because we're seeing it just, Although it's always been here and always will be, it just I'm just yeah. Nobody really keeps track of the ebb and flow, so I was just wondering if you were seeing an explosion. Good, there isn't one, so I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, me too. None that I've noticed. Okay, <laughs> talk to you again. Take care. All right, you Here's too. Students. Bye. Thank you, Mark. It's nice to have a celebrity in the household. I don't know. Just have this. Yeah, I know. He's like, I want to know. I had to turn off my fan too. Boy, I tell you, everybody else is boiling everywhere, but I'm, it's just weird. It's cold over here. Well, not cold, but you know what I mean. I wanted to talk to you and ask you about um, Sonal Edamarku and what happened with him on TV with the uh, guru who was, do you know what I'm talking about? No, who, sorry? Sonal, Sonal, I'm probably saying his name wrong. Sonal Edamarku. I that name does sound familiar. He did it okay. So he did a TV, he's a TV presenter. I guess he's with the Rationalist Association. And mm-hmm. he did um, a god, uh, a guru said he was going to kill him on stage in a live audience. So they had him go onto the show, and the guru mm-hmm. was there with like waving his hands at him and everything. And Sunal was just sitting there, just laughing. I mean, he really was just laughing on stage. And the guru kept needing more time to kill him. And uh, he had a he had a knife and he's like rubbing the knife on Sanal. It was frightening. And they he needed more time, so they kept giving him more time. And so the TV show, I think, went three hours with this happening. And they said it was one of the highest rated uh, shows ever. I think it went for three wow. hours. It got a billion views and and I'm surprised you don't know anything about it because I feel stupid asking you about it. And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> no, don't he's feel. Also, he's also. No, I a, have to check this out now. Oh, he's one of the main critics of um, the Catholic Church. And there was a, mm-hmm. uh, what happened afterwards, people were really pissed off about this because he was making fun of, well, he wasn't making fun. He's just laughing at this guy who's trying to kill him. 
Oh, and the guy kept saying, mm-hmm. "Kitty, kitty, 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 kitty." I remember that part. <laughs> and uh, oh, people, people are going to probably he, post here soon. Hmm? Uh, is he? Uh, he. Uh, one second. Is he the? Is he the gentleman who got? Uh, who is now? Uh, had to shift. He has. To, he's had to take. Uh, asylum in yes. a different country yeah, yeah he's, he's, and he's gone to norway or something right right something like that he had um i think the last straw was when he, there was a there was a uh, uh miracle statue that was leaking water and people yeah yeah, yeah. Up to it and they were trying to get the water out of it and uh yeah it turns it was out a, it i think it was a statue of mary yeah, yeah yeah yeah. and it so, was leaking from a toilet somewhere and it had bacteria all kinds of really harmful stuff in it and he exposed that and the catholic church was furious and so he had yeah, here's a letter yeah. the great tantra challenge he's put up the it's a yeah, I, wikipedia page for this it was phenomenal. i just i just found him on i just found him on twitter and he apparently just six days ago um has just uh, posted something and has also talked about uh, the guru trying to kill me on live tv the great tantra challenge video is available now hey it was, it i am was watching amazing. this he um yeah he is yeah, yeah i have heard about this though okay, now, now I, that it's, it's all coming back to me yeah, now <laughs> he had to leave the country because they were trying to put him in prison for being mm. uh, for blasphemy against the church absolutely and yeah, so the, he had to the leave blasphemy the laws are still very alive and well in this country and it's not just to, I mean, it's. I mean, it's, uh, Hinduism is already is is quite a serious. Uh, I mean, right now it's the Hindu rule, so to speak. I don't think Hindu extremists have ever had this kind of leeway in this country before. Um, but they, yeah, we our blasphemy laws and things like defamation, which also carry on through. Like, if you basically ridicule any religion, you can be thrown in jail for that. Wow. So, uh, and we feel so happy, you know, talking about the Taliban and talking about Orthodox Muslim countries and how strict they are with, you know, apostates and stuff like that. But we are not really much better when it comes to this sort of thing. And a lot of stuff gets, you know, you know, brushed under the carpet and people just forget about it. And uh, Sanal would, uh, he is he tried to do the right thing and he tried to save people and said that he says mary is not crying blood she's crying sewage and you need to get away and from do that not drink that it is not healthy exactly you. don't put it on your face <laughs> uh <laughs> but you know like it just it, I, will, it, it, I will it, put it on my face i'm gonna put it in my <laughs> baby's food too how dare you tell oh, me i can't it came from the God. the virgin mary I know it's it's nuts me. and but yeah and it's and it's not just it's not just the Christians it's not just the Muslims the Hindus are have been doing some crazy stuff over the last few years uh, we had riots in Delhi recently just a few months ago just before the pandemic broke out where uh, Hindus were uh, you know basically tearing up Muslim homes and killing people and burning down mosques and. I had like and pull it, the cops are just kind of standing aside saying oh you know let them do what they want and we've had and in the, one of the first uh one of the first things that modi did when he came into office was to ban the killing of cows across the country that means if you are suspected of slaughtering a cow you can have a lynch mob come after you and chop you up uh with uh, no repercussions most probably or at least no immediate repercussions for an extremely long period of time, in which case you can probably live a very happy life and have no regrets whatsoever. <laughs> so it's been like, we're, we've, we've got a long way to go before we can consider ourselves anywhere America's no saint close to. America. Exactly. And, we're, we're, and even with, with a, it's embarrassing. Yeah, even with your, your racism protests, I want to see the day that in India we can have protests against casteism, like in the way that you guys have protests against racism. And we're pretty racist too in every other way. Like when it comes to skin color, and I think you might have seen this in that, we're coming back to the, the, uh, the matchmaking show, is you, you things lighter, like... Lighter? Is it? 
yeah, lighter skin is always more appreciated in this country. Um, yeah, I thought I heard that, and I thought, really? Oh, okay. yeah. Even until recently, I think Fair and Lovely, which is the brand of a fairness cream, was until recently the largest selling FMCG product in India. Because you always want to have what you can't get, right? All Caucasians want to have a nice tan and all people who have a natural tan want to look like Caucasians. <laughs> so when it comes to, you know, actors in Bollywood, when it comes to getting married with, you know, you always want a fair skinned girl or a fair skinned boy. And you have advertising, which basically says, if you're dark skin, you're not going to get that job. You're not going to get that girl. You're not going to get that car. It's just, you know, your life is going to be a mess until you become white. And it's, I'm people, laughing. I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm. I know, I know. It's just, it's like, what do you do with that information? It's just we, and we're a country of brown people of every shade of brown that you can imagine, and we still do this nonsense. We still do this to ourselves and each other. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Like we have a lot of reform which needs to happen in this country before we can consider ourselves even close to something uh, to a country as undivided as the u.s as screwed <laughs> up as say, US. relatively speaking relatively speaking yeah well we are watching the news i mean anybody who's who's watching this now who's not in america they like where I live, I'm in California, which is a huge hot spot, but it's not necessarily a hot spot here. California is a massive country, uh, state, and um, yeah. you know, it's not. It's all relative. It's not as bad as there. How do I say this? What you see on the news is the worst of us, and it doesn't mean that it's everywhere. I mean, yeah, no, racism is definitely everywhere, but it's not. Yes, I'm, I'm saying this. Badly. No, but I've. But whenever I've been to, to the U.S., socialism sells. They're not. They're not following yeah. the. They're following the protests at the worst part of the protests usually, not necessarily the, the the happy good parts. You know, the or or people who cities who aren't protesting because they just don't. They have a good relationship Absolutely. with the police or whatever. And I've honestly, the few times I've been to the U.S., I have felt so warmly welcome. I have been helped out by such lovely people. And you can't, you can't feel any of that when you're walking down the street, but every country has some dark underbelly or some, you know, something lingering deep within it, which needs to be sorted out. I mean, even the UK, I lived there for a couple of years. I didn't feel any racism against myself, but it does exist there. It is oh, yeah. also the i mean there are lots of slurs that people from this indian subcontinent get whether you're from india or bangladesh or anywhere in that area you all get called pakis and Cold initially what? i didn't think that was a bad thing pakis like from pakistan oh pakis is that a is that a slur it's a slur pakis like paki pakistan pakistanis even I, though I, i'm i'm not i had no idea like, i thought kiwi was a bad word for calling people who are from new zealand <laughs> And they're like, no, that's what we call each other. I'm like, it's okay to call you a Kiwi? And they're like, yeah, yeah, of course you can call us a Kiwi. And I'm like, okay, you're not messing with the American, right? You're not just saying that. So I'll go around and start <laughs> calling people Kiwis, right? Well, no, no, you can call people Kiwis, but I'm not really sure. No, that's, that's apparently, I mean, that, that's something that I learned once I, once I moved there. And I was like, oh, is that a bad thing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> I have a list. I, I want to make sure, I want to make sure I'm not crossing any lines here. Saying the wrong yeah, thing. exactly. You were, in, you were in England for how long? Were you in London? No, I uh, I was in a small town called Falmouth for a few for a year and a half or so. I was studying professional writing there, oh. and uh, yeah, so that was about a year and a half. Then I moved to Bristol, which is also a lovely little town, like a small city, which uh, which is also I I was there for about six months until I couldn't find a job and came back. Bristol's India. kind of near um, Wales, right? Isn't it southern? Yeah, southern? just south of Wales. Yeah, I think I think we passed through there by the with the train. Wales was a beautiful place. I love. Oh it. yes, all of England it's and stunning. Scotland, I absolutely adore. And Wales was incredible. We went to Cardiff. Yeah, Cardiff. Was yeah, incredible. Cardiff. Cardiff's oh, a lovely town. Wow, really. And then we uh, wonderful place. I've been up to this. 
Snowden. Have you been to Snowdonia, which is around Mount Snowden, which is, no, uh-uh. I mean, it feels very Alpine kind of, you know, hills and mountains and, you know, quaint little towns with quaint little houses. It makes me and cry, just... the idea of being able to leave and, and travel. I know. <laughs> I can't even leave my zip code here in Salinas. I've been to the grocery store. I've been to a couple other stores. <laughs> That's about it. It's really, I can't wait till we can travel again. Is it really bad? No, I was, there, what's, I, what's going on with COVID-19? What, what's happening there? I'm sure people are curious. Well, this uh, it's getting worse, but we all knew that. Yeah, <laughs> the you thing is, talk with Richard Saunders just about this, you guys. If you guys should all yeah. subscribe to the Skeptic Zone as well as Rational Bull, and mm-hmm. um, Abhijit was there on. Uh, you've done a couple Skeptic Zones, and you've been talking about what's going on in in uh, India as far as COVID. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's really uh, interesting to follow the story. Yeah, it's it's bizarre because. None of it makes sense, like, anymore. (laughs) Initially, we had 500 people who were infected in India, and we locked down, which I was like, fantastic. We're moving in early. We're we're taking proactive steps. This is a great move. What was that? That was uh, 24th or 25th of March, I think it was. So early March, Uh, yeah. It's about the time we had it, too. Yeah. So then we locked down, and I was like, okay, you know what? This is is a good deal. then another two and a two or two and a half months went by and the numbers just kept going up. We didn't seem to flatten the curve much. And then now in the phase two of unlocking, which means malls, shops, salons are all open for business. And we are still racking up tens of thousands of people a day. And we haven't even peaked. We've we you yeah. guys have peaked, you then plateaued, and now you're peaking again. No, we, we haven't we even peaked, hit but our we still first haven't peak left yet. the first phase. We're still in the first phase. We did peak, but it's not that wasn't it. We're not done. We still consider <laughs> exactly. this first wave. That was exactly. So we've we've been so we're still we we have what one and a half million people infected total. Um let me get the latest stats. Uh confirmed we yeah 48,513 people in a day and we've the line is still very happily oh trending upwards God. like yeah we uh we're not even sign, showing sli- signs of slowing down but offices have reopened people are driving around all over the place the shops have reopened we've i've had to go shopping and go out and get things done uh, a lot of people, of course, wear the mask only up till here. Um, they keep touching it and moving it around. And yeah, and then you can't hear them talking. So they pull it down and say, oh, can you hear me now? And you're like, dude, that's not how it's done. Like, you're doing it wrong. You have one thing to do is wear a mask. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we see that. Like, that's everywhere. I, I'm, that's all over the planet, I'm sure. Like, we're not, we're not special when it comes to that sort of thing. But Absolutely. yeah, we're not we, I, like we're not handling it too well. Like I've recently, I've I had the longest drive I've had in the last three months, where I drove to Jalandhar, which is about six hours away by road, to pick up my wife and bring her back home, which is another six hours back. She but was over a couple of days. She was she was far away. You know, she she'd left as soon as the borders were opened. Her dad came, picked her up, and they all went off home, which is great because they hadn't hung out in a long time so um i went spent a couple of days there Uh with my in-laws and drove back and it wasn't too much of a deal like it was okay pass you're still using the contact tracing app which has questionable security and privacy settings and but we get on and fortunately as far as we're concerned me and my immediate family we are fine we haven't been infected um, we know people who have been, but fortunately, we are still safe. But it just it's getting harder and harder to just live life, even when the rest of the country is just opened up. And the numbers are continuing to rise. But and there are a couple of states which have locked back down, like Goa, where my brother lives, has they've gone into a second lockdown, which I think is a wise thing to do. Delhi, though, 
isn't, even though we've got one of the largest growing numbers uh, in the country at this point of time. In fact, if I was to give you the latest numbers, as far as Delhi is concerned, mm -hmm. um, here we go. Oh, we are, we are leveling off a little bit. Just a thousand cases today, uh, total of 13,000 to, no, 132,275. So we're, we're starting to level off a little oh, bit. Thank I goodness. See it. I sort of start to see it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that gives you a little hope. I hope it stays. I hope it continues to go like that. I'd love it if it did. did but yeah. And, but, and, but recently, uh, yes, yesterday, I saw a Twitter thread, which I have retweeted. So if anybody wants to see that, you can check it out um, at Be Rationable on Twitter. Where every, I've done it. I've posted it on my Facebook page. I've posted it in my group. It was. It is the accumulation of all our fears in one story uh, where a gentleman said his father had recently passed away from COVID. And the story behind that is, is heart-wrenching because this gentleman believed that taking arsenic amalgam, which is a homeopathic remedy promoted by the government of India for being a preventative, a prophylactic against COVID, he took it and thought he was immune. So he didn't do any physical distancing. He went to parties, he met friends, uh, he went to a party where three people, three other people were already infected and he became infected because he came in contact with them. And he would believe every WhatsApp message and everything that his friends told him, but he wouldn't believe the medical establishment. He wouldn't believe his doctors and take the necessary precautions. And unfortunately, because of that, he passed away. And that is the one thing that I have been trying to fight for the last two and a half months, I have written posts on WhatsApp messages that have been going around saying you should chew garlic and drink water and blow hot air up your nose with a hairdryer to fight COVID. Like, I have not heard that. I know. Oh it, my God. It, and this has been going, and people believe it. That's the crazy thing. There was a lady, there was a, a video of another lady which went viral where she was saying, you just have to eat raw onions with lemon squeezed over the top and you'll be fine 100% in the next two days. If, if, if that worked, it doesn't make sense. If it worked, the if hospital that worked, would we be using that. There would be a surge. Exactly. You wouldn't be able to find lemons and onions anywhere in a farmer's market or grocery <laughs> store, if it worked. It reminds me when people say, oh, crystal healing, you know, if you had a crystals and blah, 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 it's going to fix. I'm like, well, then the hospital beds would be made of crystal. I mean, <laughs> I know it doesn't make sense. Uh, I mean, if you. <laughs> yeah, I so know, we I don't know to... how we're going to get out of this mess. I mean, I. I I just don't know. I mean, we're going to get out of this where yeah. if all of us get out or not, I don't know. And I, I've, I've been saying for years, I've been saying for a lot of years now that, that, that this anti-science mentality we have in the world where we don't trust science, we don't trust scientists, we don't tr trust expertise, that science illiteracy that, you know, even even believing things like the Loch Ness monster and believing that uh, in the cryptozoology of that, or things that you, you know, Bigfoot, things that you would think would be benign, you know, flat earth or whatever. Mm. This, it, it, it's like an epidemic. When you get to that stage where you believe that the earth could be flat, once you start believing this conspiracy kind of stuff, it, it leads you farther and farther along into not understanding how to evaluate evidence how to evaluate a source how to, yeah. to uh, you know we're in this mess now because we have failed in the science community to to insist that our leaders are scientifically literate to insist yeah. on great critical thinking in schools from kindergarten and I think that we're seeing the, the problems that we have now because of our failures. And I think that 
I, mm. I blame our community and the science community. Sorry, guys, because we for so long have said, oh, they're just a bunch of idiots or, you know, who cares if you believe in psychics? Who, that's, we've got bigger things to deal with. It's like, yes, but it just keeps going, you know, even with psychics and, um, you know, they prey on women. It's, it's, mm. a, it's a thing that they're just all over women and, and just, anyway. I better get off the rant, but boy, I really do believe we are in this situation because of decisions we did not do. We, we may have mm. had the choice a long time ago, but we said, all right, let them cut the science budget a little bit. Oh, who cares if newspapers have a science, uh, you know, the person who's actually teaching your science class at school is actually has yeah. a degree in science. Let, you know, let the home, let the, the, the gym teacher teach it, you know, or, or, or the newspapers who who had a science wing, like there was journalists who specialized in science. Yeah. Play them off. Let, <laughs> let, let the person who handles entertainment also handle science. And, and we all kind of went, oh, well, it's just the times, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, we should have stood up for it then and said, no. Absolutely. But, but I'm, what, what gives me hope is... You. No, no, I no, it's it's true. We should have all we should have all I'm scary. <laughs> Marx isn't scary when I get upset. He's like, I agree with you. No, no, I I I I do completely agree with you. The thing is that gives me hope is that we can see this kind of content, the kind of activism that you do, the kind of uh content that I produce and like the good people like you know Paul Offit and the people at the SGU and the very existence of organizations like Psycon and the uh, the community I mean that and the rationalist community in India the very fact that we exist we're growing and we're doing things is is hard is you know kind of warms the heart and also to see that, you know, content like mine and yours and, you know, of all these of the science communicators and the skeptic community is being so widely accepted and consumed, not only in the US, but in India and in Australia and in the UK and in a lot of other countries in the world include and Germany, etc. where the, these conferences are happening and the word is spreading and the conversations are starting like I can see it like Twitter is a very nice example of that because not only does it infuriate you with the kind of misinformation that spews out of it constantly, <laughs> but it, but seeing the, the responses that people are giving, the ridicule that they are, that this misinformation is getting at the same time is also good to see that there is a resistance to it. And that resistance yeah. is what matters most. Yeah, and I just positive. There's positive. I, sound negative we've got a couple of questions let me ask you mm -hmm. and sure. i'm not 100 percent sure if this is for you or for me or maybe both so i'll let you answer it first and then i'll, I'll give my thoughts so we're asked what mm -hmm. are your thoughts on this race for the vaccine world over without testing as per norms required the race for a vaccine feels like it's happening pretty darn fast are we cutting corners and yeah. you know what's what are your thoughts on that not no, that i think <laughs> No, in India, it was there was a there was a moment there when I was like, wait a second, like there was a, our uh, our central board of medicine and I mean the of medicine medical research. Um, they said that they were wanted to come out with a vaccine by August fifteenth, which is Independence Day for India. Wow, and I was like, that's great. a noble thing to do, <laughs> what but <year>? it's also. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What year? 2022. <laughs> no, literally, they gave them gave everybody like a month and a half and said, "Okay, now make 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 a vaccine." I'm like, you, it's like you just don't. You're a you're the central medical establishment in this country, and you don't know how testing is done. Like seriously, now the Russians are coming out with it, and the Russians can do a lot of stuff. I'm sure. Oh yeah. I find it. I I I think the rush is legitimate. I think it's important that we need to get on with this process, but not at the expense of people's lives. It needs to, however long it takes, we can, we can dedicate as much time and money as we possibly can 
to focus on getting it out as soon as possible, but it has to be safe. That has got to be the topmost priority where you're not well, infecting you know people. What the or, side effects are, I mean, you know. Exactly. You know, the I mean, side effects, you're not making sure that people don't have allergic reactions to them. You're making sure that you're not infecting people or doing absolutely nothing with this kind of nonsense, which honestly, we have plenty of that going around <laughs> anyway, if you want to have turmeric milk. But uh, yeah, so it's like, a, I think it is a double-edged sword. Like it has to be done quickly, but not so quickly that we all die. Oh, that, that would be, that would be preferable i really am not counterproductive to dying. i'm getting a lot of stuff done you guys but i'm not ready to go um something else yeah. that was asked and this kind of i'm going to elaborate on oh well let me let me say my thing about the the vaccine i've been reading uh, yeah, yeah. a lot and uh, i think it was washington post i'm not really sure and we're had come out with no the new york times has a podcast called the daily and mm-hmm. they asked the question about vaccines and I guess there's they're doing uh, surveys on the science scientifically minded people like you and I and probably everybody mm-hmm. watching this and there's a lot of pushback even amongst people like us who understand vaccines save lives and vaccines are a good thing but we're apprehensive about using taking a vaccine that seems to be rushed has yeah. a political motivation, at least here in America, because if we can mm. get a vaccine done quickly before the election or really close, like at the election time in November, we would say, mm. yeah, we should be able to roll it out by December. It's it's done. We're, we're you know, if, if there was something like that, it would be politically motivated towards uh, the current president because he would be able to claim that, yeah, I did this. This is mine. So even within our community, we're feeling like it is rushed and it's frightening. And I'm not sure I would allow my children to go first. As badly as I want a vaccine, I'm not sure I want to see it. And I I hate to say, give it to those people over there. (laughs) I'll watch. (laughs) I mean, because that's not a very humanitarian kind of thing to say, but I'm not so sure. I'm, yeah, I'm we just have to. Take I, years. This is ridiculous. Yeah, Months exactly. Later. It does take not years. Even a year and we later. shouldn't. Yeah, we should. I, I have no hope that anything is going to come out before another year from now, at least, if not more than that. Like even the, uh, the, my, the Oxford study came out with one possible vaccine, which does seem to have a good response and seems to be safe. But even they have said that even though these initial results are promising, it's going to take at least a year for us to finalize and make sure that it is safe for everyone and it is effective. It, yeah. These things do take time. And there could be repercussions that we're not even aware of. Like maybe, you know, when you're testing it, from what I understand, they're testing it on a certain, like, oh, a Caucasian man. 50 years old, 40 years old, you know, it's like, that's the, the criteria. You're not looking at people with other kinds of, uh, you know, people from, from uh, China or people from, from uh, India or people or women or elderly or young people yeah. or pregnant people or people who have diabetes or on and on and on. There's, there's, we don't know what is going to happen to those people. I, I assume from what I understand, they're testing that now. But mm-hmm. well, you you just read the book, Paul Offit's book, Bad Advice. Yeah. And he was talking about the robovirus and how many years they went trying to get that. And he said it was so stressful until I think they had like a, a decade. Million, it was like a million people had taken the vaccine. He still couldn't, he still couldn't be um, um, sleep at night correctly until I think it yeah. was like a certain million of people had taken the vaccine and it was okay. It's, it's terrifying. Yeah. And that book really hit that home with me. I hadn't really thought about it. You just, you know, I was raised on Star Trek, you know, here's McCoy. <laughs> Did you watch oh, that? Like. It'd be like, <laughs> okay, I got a vaccine. Oh. We just got to travel to this far planet to get the vaccine, get this rare plant or whatever. They go there, they beam it up. You know, people in red shirts die and there's this conflict, but he's got the plant <laughs> and then they were able to meet, meet, manufacture it. And like, then he goes up to him with a little 
you know, it was an air thing they put up to him. No, no needles. They go, yeah. And you're like, you know, by the end of the show, they've got their vaccine and and everybody's happy. No side effects and life is great. Move on to the next thing and who Captain Kirk is going to fall in love with next. And that's what I was raised on. And I think a lot of people are. (laughs) Yeah, I remember one of the episodes where. Yeah, I wish, like, I've been watching, I've been re-watching The Next Generation, like, since I, the last time I watched too. it was when I was a teenager. What is that with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just finished re-watching the whole thing, and there was this episode where um, everybody on the sh- devolving into their earlier, more primitive uh, life forms, because there's some some kind of a vaccine that they use for something, which has now started modifying their genes to make it more primitive. And within 45 minutes of the show, and I'm sure maybe a little bit longer in the episode itself, they found an antidote. <laughs> they managed to make it an aerosolized gas, which they then sprayed throughout the ship and everybody was right as rain in like five seconds. And I'm like, yeah, You're right. Up. Okay. Yep, I'm fine now. Okay. I wish... I wish you could do that for the coronavirus. For I, sake. Like, so, please. so I got another question, but I have to ask you: Do you, are you a fan of the the original series? The which series? The original series. Oh, original, yeah, yeah, the yeah, real, yeah. The yeah. real yeah. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> as horribly wrong as it is in some places, I would. I'm totally a fan. Okay, okay. Do you remember the episode where Captain Kirk and one of the women and they beam down to a planet? And there's a bunch of children there who are, yeah. they get to like the age of 12 and then they start aging. And there was a little girl there named Miriam. I remember that he, there was a character they had there. Oh, the casting was so good. And he'd be like, Miriam. And she was like, I'm, she had these patches on her skin. And then, so Captain mm. Kirk starts aging and God, that was a frightening yeah. episode, like a plague they had. And well, course uh Nimoy was able um he was able to bones figure it out really quick. bones yeah he was able to figure it out real quick <laughs> let me ask you this question here real quick yeah it was for you mm-hmm. i have to scan up oh my gosh i can see only the last it went away it was something about modi modi and i can only see like the last five questions and 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 then oh, it no. goes away it was something about Modi and something about the government. Let me see if I can find it over here on this other screen. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I'm, I was gonna, I was gonna ask. Um, Let me see. If can I you can scroll back? It was it like around. about. It was like two, two um, before this one that's currently on my screen. Something about Modi. Yeah. And it said, "Ask you." You were, I was supposed to ask you. I'll let you find it since you're probably going to find it quicker than I am. No. Janice says that uh, we need more tribbles. Yeah. I, <laughs> tribbles, tribbles. <laughs> One of those popular. Oh, that's, that's, that's that good. was a that's crazy good. episode. That's really good uh, TV right there. Trump, Oxford University, Modi are all yeah, taking fast tracking on this. Oxford University. Which, uh, uh, which makes no sense, but there is something you have read on this. How widespread is the use of HCQ locally as a treatment, Susan Gerwick? No, I no, there's another one. That was you. It was you. It was something about Oxford. Oh, yeah, here. Now, there was when Trump, was Oxford University, Modi are all taking, talking about fast tracking this, which yeah, makes no right. sense. But there is something you have read on this. Is there is something? There something? On this? this is actually, this is a friend of mine, Menakshi. Uh, Hello, we're Menakshi. all school buddies. Hi, old school uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Um, I love the internet. We're meeting, we're meeting. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> totally love it. No, so I, Menakshi, I'm not really sure what you were referring to on reading this. Um, but yeah, fast got tracking. Got fast is... track, I think. I guess Modi's saying that he wants to hurry up and do this quick. Yeah, of course, and of course, that's the thing that they wanted to get this done by the fifteenth of August, which is downright ridiculous. And the Russians are saying they've already gone into phase one trials with another vaccine, and of course, Oxford University is also doing something um, 
is also working on this, which as, as we said, you know, they have got something which seems to be safe and seems to be making the antibodies, but it's a long way from being a short shot vaccine. And they said at least another year before any of this comes out. So as much as we have to rush it, when it comes to rushing a vaccine that, I mean, from the very beginning, from I think February, the WHO have been saying that it don't even think about a vaccine before 18 months from now. And now it's 12 months. There are people working on it, but even a year is an extremely short period of time for any vaccines to you know, be finalized. So we just have to, I guess, keep our fingers crossed and make sure and hope that somebody comes up with something. Like, you know that movie, um, Contagion? I didn't see it, went, but everybody's talking about it now. Now I'm afraid to watch it because it sounds really awful. But yeah, it's all yeah, I, heard to in conversations. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that sounds really horrible. No, it was, that was, it was, it's, it's scarily realistic. accurate. Oh, it was in the book. It was in Paul Offit's book. Yeah, 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 it was. He said, it was. It was he said accurate... yeah. Yeah, so he had compared contagion to, uh, what is it? Pandemic. Uh, which was uh, was something was which was based, there was something, uh, there was one movie which was based on the Hot Zone mo- a book, mm-hmm. uh, which had like uh, Dustin Hoffman, I think. Um, and of course, Contagion, we watched during the lockdown, which was extra scary because we were lying there in a the dark room watching a movie <laughs> about something that was happening around us. And Jude Law is the the single personification of all the crazies running around there saying it's a conspiracy theory. And here, try my homeopathic treatment. So uh, <laughs> it's like, it was so close to home and it was so accurate. But even they took, I think, I don't, they didn't really share a timeline. At least I don't remember a timeline that they showed. But it was a couple of years after this, uh, this uh, disease broke out that they managed to get a vaccine. And they somehow managed to get it, like, I think it was uh, Lawrence Fishburne who was the central character, was it? I didn't see one it, the... but Adrian says the other movie was Outbreak. Outbreak, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, that was completely off the mark. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot all that. It was that a has, long time ago. Your has uh, clarified his question. Yeah? It's not just Modi. It's not just Modi. And news yesterday said first human received a vaccine. So there's... So is there something outside of the mainstream media that you have all come across was the question. Ah, I see. I see. Um, is there, what do you think? Has there been anything else beyond this? Well, like, okay, f- initial human trial. Yeah, probably. I, I think that's China what the Oxford was thing was. Third, third uh, phase because they were, inoc- they were uh, doing it to the army and the army doesn't really have a choice. So mm. that's like, Running experiments on prison ma- yeah, inmates, is. right? That, that used to I be. The, I hope they don't come out. I don't find that. I love. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't come get makes me. Makes me feel extremely uncomfortable. Don't come get me. But and then again, also, if you're inocul, if you're is it inoculating, it's not. You're vaccinating. Inoculating is something. Mm-hmm. Like vaccinating um, an army of again almost all people of a certain age, certain certain demographic, certain you know ethnic. Level of male, physical fitness as well. Yeah, a certain age yeah. group. How valuable would that be? I mean, there, how many pregnant women are in the Chinese army? How many uh, elderly <laughs> people are in the Chinese army? How many children are in the Chinese army? We don't know what, you know, we may come out saying, well, this looks okay for these people in this age group, in this, you know, physical fitness. I kind of wonder if maybe yeah. what we should be focusing on, I mean, you know, we can't do much about the vaccines right now, but you know, uh, therapeutics, trying to get best practices. I think that, um, again, yeah. that really, well, I think a lot of the podcast is talking about how the inequities in, in just hospitals, the bureaucracy, the red tape that they're yeah. having to go through. People are dying because they can't get to a hospital because their ambulance has, service has a, a contract with another hospital and they can't take them from this hospital to that hospital, which where they get better treatment because of the ambulance service, because of the red tape, because of, oh. Yeah, it's just, uh, well, the US medical system is something that I am, that makes me <laughs> extremely anxious. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm like, you, just you? How, how, did it, how did it get so bad? Like so how can a capitalist system I mean, that's the, that's, that's the worst direction that a capitalist system can take when it comes to, you know, 
it literally just making money off the sick and not oh, yeah. letting the poor get the kind of care well, they want. Now in India, and, and you know jobs, and the idea that you have a job and and you have the your health insurance tied to your job is just stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your job, you should have independent. You you lose your health. Like in care. India, we have we have independent health care. We have. Uh, we have and we have jobs so sometimes we have double health insurance and we can call whichever one to make a claim um i'm not and but the indian healthcare system is pretty bad in its own way because especially the government systems are way out of date uh, the hygiene levels are quite atrocious in a lot of the hospitals i'm sure that some of the flagship ones are decently well run but they are overcrowded understaffed the the doctors are overworked you know to to a great extent and i recently did um i did some research understanding what the uh and i i spoke to some of some people within the government who are trying to figure out ways to get healthcare to the furthest reaches of rural india which is very hard to get to and honestly even the central government is having a hard time getting medical systems and supplies to the furthest reaches and to the smallest most further the furthest villages so a lot of things that have been developed have, and there's been a lot of innovation when it comes to things like affordable diagnostic kits so when it comes to people saying um you know these diagnostic kits oh uh, you know okay i'm not going to digress too much there but <laughs> so there is there's been a lot of i was going to go off on a completely yeah, we had a question too so don't go too far cuz there's another question for you yeah so uh, so the indian system is i mean it's got a lot of problems but it's not exploitative which at times makes me feel like the american system is and can be quite exploitative okay. and partial to the better financed people and the richer people in the country which is horribly sad yeah here's your question mm. uh more of his thoughts on what about the impact on pharma share prices given glenmark's prices went up 25% in 3 days after they had claimed they had a medicine possible that other smaller companies might just do false claims to have boost in prices and i have no idea what they're talking about but i guess it makes sense <laughs> to you Glenmark. No, well, I I'm not I'm not particularly good with share prices and stuff like that. I mean, I have a basic superficial <laughs> understanding of that. You're supposed to be up on that. That was <laughs> that was on your notes to hey. read up about. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my homework. My I don't have a dog. You were watching the home, you were anyway. watching the uh the the My homework got covid. Anyway, sorry. No, no, you were <laughs> you were watching the uh, Range Marriage show. Oh yeah, I was too busy watching the arranged marriage, the <laughs> matchmaking show to check up my stocks. So me, dude, like lighten up on me, man. Like, you know. Um so uh no, there is, uh, right now with everybody watching every company and every possible news outlet for some sort of a cure, uh I'm I wouldn't be surprised if companies just kind of kept popping up and saying hey you know we have a cure this and that and had their share prices go up just so they can get some you know get a little bit of a boost somewhere I mean it's not going to be long lasting it's not going to be long lived and I have a feeling as far as I know of the stock of the sh- of shares in the stock exchange that having developing you know bad you know what do you call it goodwill like bad goodwill or just having just having a doing things that are unfair and unethical in the market to fool people out of their money people are not going to like that on the long run so if companies try and do that i don't think they're going to have a very long term uh growth as far as that is concerned because they're definitely going to go down in books in the bad books of certain people who might lose money on those kinds of investments but beyond that i really can't see much more because i'm horrible at uh money investments and stuff like that which is why i need a day job to pay my bills and <laughs> you know, you know be rational know. doesn't give me any money yet yeah yeah there's no money in this you guys just just saying we are still a non-profit if you'd like to donate to um the about time channel please do so we're going to use it for scholarships please i'm going to be doing a 13 hour marathon 
Can you believe it? Uh, on November 1st is the goal. That's when we time we change our time clock, our clocks. And since we're the yeah. time project, I figured that I would do a 13 hour <laughs> marathon on the day we change our clocks. All the, oh boy. That. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm putting together a committee of people here pretty soon. That's going to help me plan what will happen for 13 hours. And we're going to use it as a fundraising event, but that's something. I yeah. Count me in. I'm in. I'm gonna go. He's like, I I'll do 13 hours. <laughs> Um, just an FYI, theirs went up 120 ru rubies or a dollar and a half in two days. So asked. Thanks, though. Well, buddy, Samir, my friend, buddy, <laughs> mate, you know he knows you're on, a lot more. He knows that you have to answer every question that asked you. So he's going to ask <laughs> you. Some okay, here's another one. This one, oh, it looks like it's to me. This is your friend. Uh -huh. You've lost this friend. This was now my my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know. I'm going to meet her on Friday and give her a talking about this. So, <laughs> <laughs> A burning question I've had yeah. for a while. New York City was going nuts with the virus, and yet there were all these viral videos of people just out in huge numbers, walking, jogging, no physical distance, no masks, whatnot. Is it a similar situation to some pockets? Oh, so is it a similar situation to some pockets of India that, that it won't touch me? Oh, so um, I have some strong I feelings about some now. of this stuff. A lot of a lot of this we think that you're seeing on TV is all the best for your marathon. Thank you. Um, all that we see is happening. I do know that the media is really is pushing some of these, um, this nonsense where it looks like, you know, um, it's better than it is. I know that's happening because you can see that some of the videos of people on beaches and stuff, they're using these long lenses and it makes it look like the people are really close together and there's like 20 <laughs> yeah. feet away from each other because they're playing up the, this uh, conflict again. And I'm not saying this is happening mm. everywhere, but uh, one of the Wikipedia pages I just rewrote was for uh, the term coronavirus party. And what they were saying is people were intentionally going to parties to get coronavirus oh. so that they get... But it's a hoax. This is not true. There's no indication oh, thank God. this is happening. And that's why I rewrote the Wikipedia page because people are saying, oh yeah, this is happening all the time. And the media was, was it looks like the media is, is fueling that story because it gets clicks. I mean, it's like viral. People go, what? Another coronavirus party in Kentucky? Those people are so stupid. It's a bunch of kids. And what it looks like they're doing is they're shaming especially young people. And mm. I don't know about you, there are some really badly informed people out here in America, but I have an optimism that feels that most people understand that, that is, they understand the danger. We hear the stories mm. about people who think, you know, the people who won't go into the store with a mask and they're fighting and they're laying on the floor crying. And you hear these horrible stories about that, but the majority of people I think understand they're wearing their masks, usually over their nose, and they're washing their hands and they're being careful. And I think that the majority of the stories we're hearing are hyped for media clicks, for conflict on TV, to get eyeballs. That's not saying that there's not a lot of really bad stuff going on. It's just, I feel like the media is playing it. And um, going yeah. back to your question, um, I think, I am really, it's a frightening, frightening thing, but what's going on in America, but again, mm -hmm. it's kind of pockets. The cameras are mostly where the problem is, not where, you know, it's calm. And I don't see a problem with people going out jogging or walking your dog or even going to the beach. And it's all beach near by me. If you're out there with your family members that are already in your household and you are careful and you're laying in the sand i can't see that that being a bad thing i think it's probably good for your mental health if anything yeah, but absolutely. the problem is and i didn't realize this until i heard a, a governor talking about the state of michigan that michigan's this tall state and all the cases mostly are in the south and what's happening is people are saying I want to get away from COVID and, you know, I've got all this time down anyway, because I'm not working. So I'm going to get my boat 
and I'm going to drive up to the northern part and go into the to the water. And so they say, you know, what's the problem with that? I'm just out in a boat, just out, you know, floating around. Well, the problem is, is that the COVID cases in the south are now being traveled up to the north. <clears throat> and on your, it'd be fine if we were back in the Star Trek where we could just beam in the transporter and go bing, bing, and we're there. But you got to get gas in your car. You got to load up with supplies. You got to go drive up there. You're probably going to stop part way to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm to get more supplies, to get food. And you're pulling yeah. the COVID with you as you go. And then when you get to the place you're at, you may be going to a small town that doesn't have um, cases. So people are a little more lax. Um, they're going in and saying, oh, you know, let's get all the food that we need that needed to be refrigerated. So they're going to the store and they're getting stuff, you know, that ice cream or things that couldn't have been, you know, brought with them necessarily getting more gas, interacting yeah. with people. And so it's not the being at that place that's the problem. It's the getting there and getting back and all the interactions you're having with people along the way. You know, if you have car trouble, um, if you have emergencies, um, accidents. And, and then again, it's pulling the COVID into little towns that normally wouldn't have seen the problem. And they're maybe not even be ready for it because they're just, you know, it's a town of 200 people. Why, why would I notice, you know, we're, we're fine. Yeah. And if you're, cases here. And, and especially if people are not wearing masks because they feel, oh, I'm in a place which doesn't have COVID. I oh, need, need to wear air. a mask, but they're not. Yeah. But then they're, if they're the ones who are infecting and they're infecting everybody they come in contact with and speaking to it, if they're not washing their hands or sanitizing, then they're touching things. Mm -hmm. and it'll go everywhere. Like when I was driving up to, you know, pick my wife up from her family. How many times did you stop? How many chances were there for you? If you had it, how many chances were there for you to spread it? If you had it, let me, on the way there and back, I'm curious. There twice on the way back and did you stop to get gas. No, I didn't stop to get gas. I did. No, I did stop to get gas once. Did and you also used to a bathroom. Yeah, I did. And didn't touch my face, came straight into the car, had sanitized before I touched anything, put the sanitizer on the wheels a little bit, kept driving. Okay. So, How about yeah, food? The, food, we, yeah, I got like, we got a burger on the way, like a, I got some fries on the way. Like a drive through You're frozen. Oh, this is great. I have the show to myself. Da, 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 as he unfreezes. And that's a great way he's frozen. Look at that with the finger. He's pointing right at me. I'll be chat, you froze on me. <laughs> so I'll use this to, I'll use this moment to talk to everybody and say, please um, like us on Facebook on the About Time channel. See if he comes back really quick. Please um, forward your messages to people all over the place. Uh, please, um, <laughs> it's so funny to see him in the corner of my eye with him frozen like that. Please go to our about time, um, YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Maybe he's going to come back again. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing some more talks coming up. I have a lot more planned and I would love if anybody has any ideas of people I should be interviewing can, if you want to help out to felicitate that, that would be felicitate, facilitate that. That would be great. And um, we have the, starting tomorrow, Center for Inquiry is going to be doing a lecture series. They're gonna start off with um, Joseph Ubaniski. I can't say his name, uh, I feel pressure. And he's going to be talking about um, something very interesting. He's a man who we've, uh, I've interviewed, I've actually met him at SciCon. He's a expert on, on conspiracy theories. And he is going to be giving a talk. It'll be seven o'clock on the East Coast time in America, four o'clock here in California. And here he comes, here he comes, he's back. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, he's Ooh, back. Hey, hello. That was scary. Hey. I was so afraid, I was alone. I was just telling everybody that there's a lot of things <laughs> coming up. Nexus is coming up on um, the 31st and that's a, online conference that'll be exciting there's going to be bill nye and andrew and and oh, all the way from new zealand they have susie um why wills 
I can't think of her last name, but anyway, she's amazing. She's a scientist in uh, New Zealand. She's a science communicator and she's amazing. And she has, um, she's an expert on like uh, uh, viruses, no, not viruses. Like whenever you get um, viruses that are resistant to um, antibiotics. Superbugs. Superbugs, yeah. So that's that's coming up. And um, on, if you guys are awake and and uh, and want to spend a few hours with us on Zoom, we do trivia on six thirty tomorrow, which was six thirty California time. But we go from seven o'clock till about ten o'clock California time. We do trivia. I host that. That's a lot of fun. And coming up in the future, uh, Janice uh, Boyton has a lot more things lined up for us. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Michael Burke, who is a, a um, reporter and uh, about facilitated communication that's coming up on Wednesday, the 5th of August. And oh, all kinds of stuff. And now I'm a jet's back. <laughs> Yay. You scared, you froze. And when you froze, you froze on like. <laughs> <laughs> With I'm, your not, finger, I'm, like, I'm so right glad back. it wasn't like <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't do that because it's going to freeze on me no I'm hooked up to the internet here and it's I'm, I'm an hour from San Jose so I've got Silicon Valley right here so it's okay oh nice no I think <laughs> I had to I had to switch to my mobile network for, for some reason because I don't I think my Wi-Fi is just copped out a little bit it tends to do that every now and then with with if pretty decent usually known, if only we'd known that there was going to be happening we all would have upgraded our internet we all would have upgraded our our sound system and our and our videos but no <laughs> <laughs> nobody told. hey we still got time there's no <laughs> vaccine yet we got plenty of time <laughs> yeah everybody needs to get their everything is upgraded but your microphone sounds so good and i i think it's because you do podcast and i want to remind everybody that uh he has a podcast called um rationable the right? rationable podcast the rationable podcast and you can you can check them out yeah. they have a facebook page as well as a youtube channel so i'm told mm -hmm. and, and um he's going to promise that he's going to talk about stuff that to educate everybody about uh, what's going on in in uh, India too, I, I you know I, I I'm really enjoying this conversation, comparing what's going on between the two two worlds because we don't get that kind of information. I don't think where what's yeah, it really it's, like it's, uh, for you there. I mean, do you have to put on it if you go to the store right now? If you go to a grocery store right now, how many people mm -hmm. are going to be wearing masks? I think most of them are going to be wearing, most people are going to be wearing masks and most of them are going to be wearing them well, at least as far as I've noticed. But then there's always that guy, you know, who's got it like, who's put it down under his chin because he feels that people can't hear him or just under his nose, which is basically pointless. And it's just, it's, uh, I mean, we, you get a mixed bag. Can you go to a store with a mask, without a mask? Yeah, I'm sure you can. Not I, my, I've, not I've my never, city. <laughs> I've never tried doing that though. You can't even get in the door, and we're in, we're well, in a that's lockdown. A, lockdown. That's a probably a that's probably a good idea because I've seen your mask protesters, and that that is some scary doo doo. Like that is <laughs> <laughs> not something I. Uh, uh, we have had some mask protests, like just general arguments and fights and apparently somebody got shot in india i'm not sure about Ooh. that story just you know so but it's not it's not like a movement it's not that it's happening all the time most people i'm very happy to see are wearing masks not only when they're out and about but also while they're driving which i think is a bit silly if you're driving with you know maybe a person it's getting you, used to it lives in your home you just kind of get i've i've driven that. with it for a certain periods of time we've got one of those cotton washable ones mm -hmm. um and they're all right. They kind of get a little sore behind the ears, but you know, one makes do. <laughs> As have, one does. We have a bunch. We just come in, take them out, put them in the washing machine, get the next one. You know, so we're we're. I remember buying. We made our masks out of socks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because oh wow! Like, it's really simple. You just take a stretchy sock, you cut it a certain way, and then you just go like this. And then you can put a filter or something like that inside. It's kind of messy. But it worked. But that's what Mark yeah. and I did for a very long time. It's free, cheap, and you can 
you take a sock that has holes in it, put a little paper towel or something in there. And then we nice. said, I'm not going to go and invest in buying a bunch of masks. <laughs> this is going to be over soon. <laughs> it's like when you're pregnant no, I... and you're in like your seventh or eighth month. And you're like, nothing fits me. Everything's so ugly. But why would I want to go buy something new when I'm just going to be, the baby's going to be <laughs> gone in a couple months, you know? It's the same mentality, but we finally went down and broke down and got a bunch of brunt, a bunch of masks that we can wash. No, that's a good thing. <laughs> I was I was on this live thing with uh, with Cybabe, you know, Yvette Dontremont, and uh, she has these uh, what is it, Star Wars masks, da, da, da. and I was like, damn, I wanted some of that, but unfortunately, apparently. India is not accepting any shipments coming from the US, which is probably <laughs> just as well. <laughs> <laughs> so even for that novelty factor, I, I, I couldn't unfortunately get any probably over. But... In India right now, making some awesome Star Wars masks. And if anybody like knows like who's watching, if you anybody watch, knows you watch, guy... you're going to get five people. I've been buying things, <laughs> trying to buy things more locally um, so that there isn't the transportation issue and stuff, but I bought my mask yeah. off of Etsy and uh, it took like hmm. oh, like 12 days to receive them though. But <laughs> yeah, I ordered, I ordered mine off Amazon and it took about the same amount of time. It, it took till the lockdown lifted for me to get the masks. So. <laughs> From what I understand, Center for Inquiry is going to have some nice masks. Just yeah. saying, I, they're not watching. I don't think right now. So I can, I can leak that little bit of information. I've seen them. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they're going to ship it to India either. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, but yeah, say, what do you mine do? say? Vote. Oh, that's nice. Mine that's just uh, look like vote. underwear. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I hope not. But you know, so I've seen some people who walk going around looking like they've just put their underwear over their face, which is I don't know. You do you. I'm I'm not, as as not stuff, judging. Filter. Okay, we got we got we got another question. Well, mm -hmm. one of the people. These are your friends. They're all. This is great. They were saying in Delhi, their my, shops my will peeps. Will, uh, Will not allow you to enter with if you're not wearing masks. That's the same. That's absolutely the same in in my town. You cannot enter anything without a mask. I mean, I mean, you're, you're supposed to if good. you're walking your dog, you're supposed to have a mask on. Nobody's really enforcing that's it. But most people are doing it. Another one says, a uh, personal question for us both because he had an account. Um, I had an encounter with COVID. Was negative, but stayed quarantined for 14 days. But what's worse, false negative or false positive? Because in false negative, you can spread. And in false positive, you're taking pills like a loony person for no use. I have <laughs> no idea how to answer that question because <laughs> I, I haven't been tested. Honestly, the... I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm quarantined anyway. Um, <laughs> Mark just went so to False the anything office. is a bad thing. <laughs> it, I I'm, I'm sound like you. You go in, you don't go far because you don't want to go far away from a bathroom. Because you don't want to have yeah. to use somebody else's bathroom. That's like a bad thing. But I did use one over at the store the other day. I had to go and I felt really bad. But I was like, I kept my mask on. I washed everything. I, <laughs> it's a scary feeling, you know, to go into an enclosed area. Um, yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, even when I had to stop on that okay. drive, I, I had my mask on. I was not touching my face. I was not touching my mask. I did what you got to do. And then you wash your hands thoroughly and you still don't trust it because you've had to touch the tap. So you get back in the car and you sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Absolutely. And that's the only way to go. Yeah. It was weird that we didn't have, you know, um, again, you know that psychics aren't real. It's another test of it is that, that they didn't invest in all the stock for Zoom or Lysol or, <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> I can't, still can't buy those Lysol wipes. I don't know if you guys have those there. It's like a tub and you had the, like a fabric-y kind of stuff and you pull it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, we got a, that. I had some at the house. Thankfully, I had them mm. before, but it's not something that you can still can't even buy it in a store right now. They're, the, the aisles are just empty. I told Mark, well, I like, said, I saw go some... easy on those. And he goes, just buy some more. I'm like, you do realize we're still in a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> we have to- no, I saw now. some- <laughs> I saw some, some something similar on Amazon in India, which I, and it was selling quite well and it was a featured product and it said it was disinfectant wipes. And then I looked at the chemical, which is the key chemical. Mm -hmm. And I tried to look up how much of a disinfectant it was and if it 
you know, if it killed coronaviruses. And I didn't find it on the CDC list of chemicals. Hmm. So I was like, okay, so there are people out there who are using this weird sanitizing thing, wipes, which might not actually do anything in the way that we wanted to do things. Uh, well, that's scary. Don't tell me that. I've, <laughs> I've also seen I've also seen Ayurvedic hand sanitizer, which is even scarier. Oh my gosh! Oh, so okay. Uh, another question from your friend. He said that India is exploding with handmade cotton cloth masks now. It's emerging market, and I am going to. That is absolutely right. This is why mm. I feel really good about what's going on in the world. Humans are amazing creatures at adapting. We are especially, yeah. especially is this capitalistic world where we are really good at finding a way of there's a, there's a niche over here that needs to be filled. Somebody's going to fill it. And yeah, I think that um, sewing has become a thing again. Um, I had, <laughs> yeah. I gave, I gave a bunch of my elastic and stuff to my neighbors. I'm like, you use it to make masks. I don't have time to do, I, I don't sew anymore. But I think that we are going to innovate and get ourselves out of this situation and mark my words, we're going to be better off because when this is over, imagine the future, you guys. Go on a journey with me to a time where things will be better. In the future. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have at least a generation, if not two generations, where we will see less uh, flu, uh, measles, um, anything that's transferable because we're already getting in that mindset of, washing your hands um don't don't touch things unnecessarily don't um like i just thought like a birthday cake you know you put the candles in the birthday cake and somebody blows the candles out we were spitting all over the yeah. cake <laughs> like oh my god don't <laughs> blow the candles out now, use a hair dryer think, or something you're having better people sneezing into their arms instead of sneezing like this there's a lot of behaviors that we're slowly changing and and that least flu season for the next few years, I think we're going to see less transference of it because we're going to be better at getting our vaccines, I think. We're going to have, hopefully, people have taken the science stuff seriously that we need to actually kind of, you know, embrace uh, going into the sciences. Maybe there'll be a whole generation of students right now who are going to go into virology and are interested in bacteria yeah. research, I'm hoping. I think that um, yeah, absolutely. How long have you worn a mask at a go in public without fiddling with it? <laughs> true. I get out of the grocery store <laughs> and you're trying not to fiddle with it. And I I take the wipes out, hand sanitizer, clean my hands. I take my glasses off. I clean the, this and I clean the the nose of my glasses. I take my purse. I clean my purse. <laughs> it's just the way. No, I fiddle with it all the time, but I try and make sure that I fiddle with it with without touching the front of the mask. Right, like to, maybe yeah. just a little bit. Linda Rosa says that she has a desk, she has a test tomorrow, skin check tomorrow. It's going to be in the parking lot is where she's going to have the test done from her doctor. Oh. And, and, and I've noticed that telemedicine, I'm having, you know, whenever I've had to have a talk with a doctor, and Mark's also had this too, where you didn't have to go in and have some like test done. And they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're just like, you know, give you a Zoom call and they talk to you yeah. over the thing. That's amazing. I've done that. Isn't that I've amazing? I've done that a couple of times. You I, don't have to have pants Yeah, it's anything. fantastic. No shower. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's and good. No and no sitting in a waiting room. Having to drive around, infect yeah. people or, or whatever. I, it, it's, good for, it's good for the world. Um, yeah. My oh, mother's had a consultation... Uh -huh. with you know on on the phone uh, with a rheumatologist i've spoken to a dentist and you know like you know what kind of mouthwash should i use and she's like come in whenever you can but until then do this 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 and during the lockdown so we had a whole bunch of people who got stuck with us so they had come for my birthday party which <laughs> was not as much of a party as i had hoped like it was going to be like 50 people and it turned out to be like 10 less than 10 like 7 8 people well it might have been a good who, thing yeah, that's and this was just two days before the lockdown. So and we thought, you know, it's all right. It's like just 500 people in the country are infected. It's all, we can just the few people had already were coming into town and had already come into town. So there's no going back. And they said, fine, just come over. You know, we'll have a few drinks. It's all right. And then they got stuck with us. And so one of them was my sister-in-law. And 
she uh you she adore some... she may be watching this right now no no she 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 had some tooth problems oh and we gave a call to the dentist and talked it through and we uh we sorted it out to quite an extent so yeah we've done a ton of it and the cool thing is like i was talking about you know getting medicine to the furthest reaches of rural india one of the things that has started becoming more popular before the pandemic even came around is telemedicine so they they have a little outpost in the little villages which just has a like a video conferencing kind of setup uh and you have people coming to that place and they have a conversation with a doctor who is in a bigger city who gives them a consultation as to what the problem might be gives them prescriptions everything's like about board you like show me your tongue etc cetera, etc cetera. and you have a guy there who can measure your pulse and your blood pressure and you know basic things like that and then a you know a qualified doctor can give you a prescription based on that so that's that's pretty good and that's i think that is the way forward when it comes to probably a majority of our health issues which we don't really need to physically be there like there are yeah like we have a blood pressure machine at home we've got thermometers we've got like we can take our own pulse and we can figure that out so like a lot of it is just a check up anyway you know it's just like how are you doing with that medication i gave you or you know how you feel it, yeah it, exactly it's not and and i think we're we're this this um epidemic has also pointed out how bad the inequities are at least in america i don't know i'm sure it's bad there too but oh how, yes how important yes. there's people who don't have internet in their location they don't have it at home mm-hmm. they don't have computers at home they don't know how to use they were talking about elderly people in the san francisco area believe it or not don't have cell phones mm-hmm. have never used one before have no idea how to use them so they can't really do the Ooh. telemedicine stuff so all these inequities hopefully are being pointed out hopefully mm-hmm. we can get this taken care of um, maybe when the time gets better where we can you know neighbors and family members can help these people learn how to use um, uh, technology and or mm. be more watchful for them i know i've gotten a lot closer to my neighbors over this we've all bonded together that's wonderful and i think that, I we, think I... that there's a lot of positive that's coming out of this Yeah I think there there certainly is um unfortunately the when it comes to technology and stuff when it comes to india like we've had a huge problem with migrant workers who have moved hundreds of kilometers away from their villages to come and work in cities and they during the pandemic when everything shut down they find themselves stranded in a city with no way to get out uh food is expensive rent is expensive no money coming in because their work has been shut down because all construction sites were shut down and no infrastructure building development was happening so a lot of them they started moving back to the villages on mass a lot of the time on foot or on cycles wow and many of them died on the way from exposure from getting hit by cars on the highway from just uh from medical conditions that they were suffering from with you know heart problems etc that just couldn't handle the strain of walking all day every day in the heat in the open and they a lot of them have like well, much later the government finally took some control and got people shuttled to their villages but now they're in their villages we don't know how many of them have been infected a very few of them would be not only literate but educated enough to use a smartphone maybe living in a city a lot of them would have had that that facility but i i don't know how, to what extent they would really be able to make use of that or have the kind of signal or electricity available in the villages to be able to contact anyone in that case so honestly there's a huge dark spot which I don't think anybody has really measured as to how this has affected people out, out in now. the furthest villages. It's, yeah. it's it's now on our radar whereas before we, yeah. we weren't really aware of these inequities and, and it, like you said they but and several of your friends are saying the same thing is that we're we're becoming innovative about how to fix it. I know that like mm. in some areas of America they don't have really good uh, internet connections. So one of the things they were doing and the kids are supposed to be learning at school right uh, on the internet the kids don't have mm. maybe if lucky a household has one computer but if you've got like three kids 
and the parents trying to use that computer because they got to work and the kids got to, you know, all are on school. So, you know, we're learning yeah. how, what can we do? What, how, how can we get more computers to these people? Or they were also taking school buses and putting a Wi-Fi setup on the school bus, parking them in, oh. in, in school, uh, in neighborhoods and letting those school kids know the password to get in so that they would have internet. I think they were also doing it at malls. So you could take your kid wow. and laptop to a mall and you could sit in the parking lot in your car and you could use the Wi-Fi at the, at the mall so that the kid will at least have some Wi-Fi. There's just tons of things that are changing or at least, at least we're learning about it to be able to Absolutely. fix these problems. So when we're done with this, and we're waiting for the next pandemic to come along. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be better prepared for it. I mean, we're learning about PPE. I never really thought about PPE mm. before. You know, best. Who practices. thought of PPE before this thing? Who even knew, I mean, knew that what profession. a PPE was? Yeah, you just didn't. These are things we didn't know. I mean, I learned. I learned about the R not factor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm learning. You know, people are yeah. learning, people are learning about mask usage. I didn't know anything about in uh, in ninety five mask. I didn't know that that filtrates ninety five percent of. The, <laughs> the and there was a fascinating video I watched, which uh, which talks about how N ninety five masks filter out ninety five percent of those particles. It's just because all these fibers are kind of interwoven in a random way, and they just they have they're statically charged. So it's not just that they filter those particles is those particles get attracted to those to the fabric static charge and get stuck there because of it just it blew my mind yeah so, there's so <laughs> much putting it out there. i know it's horrible but i am choosing to look at it in that maybe we're in this horrible mess let's learn from it and yeah. let's see if we can make sure that we can keep you know things like this not happening or again or if it does we can nip it in the bud quickly yeah, this is history in the making. And of course, you know, as the saying goes, yeah. <laughs> if you don't learn from history, you are bound You're to repeat it. And we are repeating the Spanish flu pandemic again. But now we have more, we do have better levels of technology, mm -hmm. uh, but we also have the internet, which is wonderful because we can have this conversation. Yeah, but then you have... That's great. Yeah, exactly. In and, California. But then you have... But you can use, like I was just having this conversation with another friend of mine, is that there's, there's this channel, for example, called London Real, which has, uh, which has had an interview with a, a guy called David or something, Ike. Oh, who is, oh, uh, oh, yeah, David Ike, the, 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 he believes in alien, reptilians are leading the government. Yeah, and he, He's totally up for this whole thing that, you know, the 5G networks are making the coronavirus and killing us all. Like, I'm like this is, I mean, the internet is a double-edged sword. Yeah. <laughs> Along with having people like us having conversations like this and spreading, you know, critical thinking values and the critical thinking and skeptical values. But at the same time, you have people like that who are just ruining it for everyone. And, well, we have to just, you know, this is just a communication platform. We have to keep fighting that kind of right. nonsense wherever we see it. Now, we, get, we need to start other. ending this, but I do want to ask you a quick question. How prevalent mm -hmm. is Wikipedia in India? I mean, are they, would you say it's like people are using that regularly or is it, what do you think? I think people are using it regularly. I think there's a lot of value in it. I, uh, people don't, of course, you know, validly don't trust it. In fact, when I was doing my uh, when I was doing my MBA, we were told that you know if you get anything from Wikipedia, your your paper is immediately disqualified. You know, all of it's gone. So, but it is a very interesting place to kind of go and get a first shot of you know get a, get a first round of information and a good place to kind of branch off to different websites because of all the sources that are cited. And I did, I did learn a lot even when you were training me for the Gorilla Skeptics. I wish I could have continued, but I was too busy, busy setting up Rationable to be able That's to okay. unfortunately have time for you that and a day job. As long as you're busy doing something that. else, I don't care. 
but so no but i tell everybody about you guys <laughs> so <laughs> i'm i'm curious because we have so much work to be done in the indian the world how do i say this in the united states we don't probably think of some of the things we wouldn't consider them to be important pseudoscience things mm. to be dealing with whereas in india maybe it is extremely important um a lot of the gurus the god men um I, I, how do you say that word you say it all the time avidetic um ayurveda yeah that's another thing that's a mild thing here homeopathy is mild um a lot of the pseudo sciences that we hear in an english uh, in america might say ah nobody cares about that nobody cares about that but in india would be extremely helpful especially the people your science community the people of science yeah. the organizations of science um i would love that we spend a lot more time i don't have a, a crew of india uh, people who would be focusing on india here i mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's definitely something that if if i know that it's highly read in india then it must be i'm sure those that are really focused we got to find a way of focusing on getting those wikipedia pages in great shape for for readers yeah yeah i i honestly i think that's a good idea because there is i think there is access i'm sure there's some way that we can get some statistics and you know kind of get a readership of wikipedia from the indian perspective i'm sure it's out there in fact i think i did look it up when i first signed up for gorilla skeptics on wikipedia and i did look it up um the in fact i got a mail from uh someone called paget creelman mm -hmm. uh with an email address which is very cool tron villain <laughs> um <laughs> either way so they uh wrote to me about ayurveda and the ayurvedic page on wikipedia which i found very interesting because i hadn't really looked at it before but it is a very well loaded page and there is a lot of information there a lot of accurate information hmm. which and there is there also small noticeable paragraphs which say that it is considered a pseudo scientific alternative medicine uh, uh at least that's what scientists claim so um i did read through it so there is i think regardless of the readership i think there is a probably a lot of reference which happens through wikipedia and we should definitely uh yeah. get people like if anybody listening who is watching this live or watching this later your friends, definitely your friends who, yeah my friends my who friends. are going through <laughs> yeah well obviously um, have a lot of time in their hand if they can watch this conversation <laughs> Yeah, see, we all we Indians we sleep super late. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this is very. Team. You guys can join. I will train you. It happens over Facebook, so contact me on Facebook. And I think mm -hmm. that there's so much work to be done, and you know, I really, really think we we're, we've made a lot of progress. I think we've written fourteen hundred pages. We're at sixty five, almost sixty six million page views already. Wow. There's a lot. But that so is a lot. Done. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, I, I can I testify that at least for the portion of the the course that I did when I first signed up for the Gorilla Skeptics of Wikipedia, that uh, Susan has a you know wonderful way to teach you in a very process, uh, like a process it's, oriented, it's like step too. by step way. It's better than we and it's good. I we've revised it. It's easier now. Oh, cool. Yeah. So even better. And <laughs> even there's uh, there's a. There is a there's a Wikipedia game which you can even play to kind of learn a lot of the basics yeah. which I had no idea existed but it's amazing and it it if you have that kind of time and that inclination that you need that you would like people to see accurate information on Wikipedia as a first shot of information because as as much as Wikipedia is very thorough about you know having cited sources and unbiased information, there are a lot of people who know how to play with that and make it seem like reliable information when it isn't. So definitely jump in, do the course, figure it out, do it at your own pace. Just do a little bit every now and then. It makes a huge amount of. <laughs> this difference. is supposed to be a commercial for my project. <laughs> We're supposed to be talking to you, but I do think that it is important since I have you here is to make sure that we we do 
you know, um, we have to be wary that this is, there's pseudoscience that, like I said, some parts of the world we wouldn't even consider and other parts like yeah. I, I always like the story of fan death in korea if you heard of korea and fan death skeptoid talks no. about it i think that's where i first heard of it in korea you can't buy a fan that doesn't have a timer on it because they believe that if the fan is on in a room with an elderly person especially an elderly person whose health isn't great that the air of the fan blowing back and forth will kill them it's a thing. You can see it on Wikipedia's Wikipedia page called Korean Fan Death. It's a skeptoid episode, like I said, too. So Whoa. I guess what had happened, a few few people have died. Like you leave the room, you have the fan on, you leave the room, you come back, and grandpa's dead. It was the fan that did it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's, it's a thing that nobody wow. else would probably have ever considered. But in Korea, it is enough that they have you cannot buy a fan without having a timer that you twist on it to to stop at a certain time because you can't have people that is so strange I can imagine like i have to tell my wife about this she loves these korean dramas these okay shows on netflix well, look she at the loves Wikipedia that. page somebody's probably posting it up but there is but that is something <laughs> that really needs to be really well written and it needs to be translated into korean so that people will go, yeah. oh, I thought this was a thing, but it's not a thing. But nobody else would have really considered that this is, <laughs> I mean, wouldn't yeah. say, oh, gee, I better write the Wikipedia page for Korean fan death. <laughs> 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 but there are, every, every culture and every language has all kinds of things that are nuances that, that, that need to be addressed because there are people who are looking Absolutely. for information on it that other people from other cultures and other languages would never even consider. So that's why I would like to have people who are from India. Well, I'd like to have people, anybody, anybody can join, anybody, I'd like them all, but I really need a lot Absolutely. more Indians to say, this is a thing that's becoming popular in our, in our world. And we need to get in before it becomes a big deal. And, and Wikipedia is, you know, usually where people Google just leads you to. So you kind of have to. Yeah, exactly. So Minakshi has sent a message as well just now uh, saying that, yeah, Wikipedia isn't a valid source. And I agree. Like it is only a first step. It is only you a first Go to the first... citations at the bottom. and follow... Yeah, you go to the citations at the bottom and then you start moving on with the other things. So, but the key is, the important thing is that a lot of people consider it to be an initial source of information. Right. Like if you're looking up for something, you go to a Wikipedia page, you get the lowdown and everything, and then that you use that, right? right. It isn't a reliable source, you're but the key is to it make it more yeah. reliable. You're not supposed to cite it yep. in, a, in an essay, but you. But regardless if it's a reliable source or not, we're using it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a good is, place so to start. Let's get it fixed so that it's good. Yeah. The pages exactly. we it's write a are good really good first step. By the way, our pages yeah. that we write are really amazing. So yeah, that's how I say. I know. Yeah, yeah, you know. Okay, so we should end this. <laughs> We've been talking. It's been great. 11, 12, 1, two and a half hours. Wow, Jesus! I it didn't feel that way at all. I, know. <laughs> I love these fun. conversations. It's so much fun when you have fun, fun people I'm interviewing, and it's and they have interesting stories. It's it's like. And I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm absolutely adoring, loving doing this. And I hope that maybe we'll be able to have more talks and more interesting things going on. There's a lot, um, you know, so. Absolutely. And while you're doing this, I'll keep dropping by when you're talking with someone else and interview yeah, someone else. please do. And I'll keep dropping in and say hi. You've got some friends that have some good good thoughts and, and I'm in complete agreement with, with them and they agree with me. So, you know, they're even better. They're even cooler now. <laughs> And We're all friends here. Indian, that Indian matchmaker uh, Netflix series is so interesting. It's I gotta I gotta watch the rest of it and see. Okay, just a quick disclaimer before I leave. Oh. That show, a lot of it is true, but a lot of it is also extreme and dramatized. Even though the matchmaking oh. and the arranged marriage thing is prevalent across India, but it is a little bit on the extreme just side. Like so all just the take it with COVID a pinch stuff. of salt. They're going to the more interesting yeah. stories and the things that are a little more sensational. No, we're not following the exactly. average person who just yeah met somebody. Yeah. And also, who wants to watch average persons? You know, people. Well, I am okay. With that, but, <laughs> you know, I, I'm fascinated with how they filmed it. That these people are willing to give up so much of their privacy, 
And I, mean, I know, I know. I was things. wondering exactly. You gotta remember, right. there is a camera there. There's a crew of people there. So when the guy is yeah. is is getting turned down by his girlfriend, or he she's like, "Sorry, we're not a match," and he's like, "They're painting on his little little um, uh, <laughs> detail, little toy." He's painting it as he's watching her on the phone on the on the screen say, "You know, we're not a match. I'm sorry," and he's probably devastated and. And then she hangs up. She goes, I hope you find somebody that will make you happy. And he's like, okay, thanks. And then he's just like, still yeah. sitting there painting. It's... And you're like, there is a camera crew right now. They <laughs> just got to the front. I know, exactly. I've been horrible. thinking about that all the way through. You're like, oh, and, and a, man. And I'll send you a link of, uh, apparently there's a one hour behind the scenes interview with a lot of the characters, or a lot of the people in there. Mm-hmm. So that's on YouTube on Netflix I India. Watch that so, after uh, I watch. Is this just one season? I mean, once it's done, we'll know. Yeah, it's just one season. Ah, here it yeah. is. This is the thing to start off with is rubbish. It's extreme worst character casting. But hey, if you want drama, that's what we do in casting characters. Oh man, don't tell me that. I want to think these are real <laughs> people, just average people. Ah, oh, well, what are you going to do? Casting and drama. <laughs> a lot of it. A lot of it would be. I don't know if it's casting, but it's definitely a lot of drama and a lot of reality editing TV to make it even really more. Reality. Exactly. That's what reality TV yeah. is, right? We need critical. It's dramatized reality. We need, to, we need to say to ourselves, when we're watching these things, what are we not seeing? And how is it that exactly. they happen to get the conversation just at the right time? Oh, the camera's turned on just as she was calling to tell her, you know. But it is, it is, yeah. and I, I'm really enjoying learning a little more, more about the culture and the colors and the foods and the atmosphere and the whole, <laughs> and the language and the, the way they interact and the slang. Oh, it's all interesting. I, you know, well, when this, back here at home. <laughs> yeah, well, when, when the world returns to normal, come on over to India. I'll take you to get some real Indian food, oh, no, not Americanized scary. Indian food. Oh, no. And, uh. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you and uh, I'll uh, I'll show you guys around town and I'll tell you where to go around the country and you, I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you and Mark should drop by. Okay. After all of this, I'll I'll tell him. So all right, everybody, Dude. go over to like us on Face uh, uh, About Time Project so that you, and and click the little button that says when Susan Gerbig is live or About Time is live that you'll you'll get a notification and subscribe to the YouTube channel for about time as well as his channel rationable and subscribe to him on facebook and subscribe to him on twitter and subscribe to him on on his podcast download it on your on your podcast listening apps and stay safe wonderful Bye you now. too have a wonderful time and i'll uh, talk to you soon thank you so it's much for this this was lovely yeah it was great bye